All right, let's get this started. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Here we go. Fresh this. Pop this chat out. And we're all good. All right. And we're good. Yep. All right, we're straight. Here we go. All right. What up, MMA? What up, Scott? Night Prowler. Salute, my man. Vector, Eric Gomez, Nordic. What up, official? How you doing, my man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hope you're doing good. Um, MMA says Morocco is a lot tougher than people think. Never been stopped. Can punch. Tall as hell. Yeah, no doubt. That's what I've been trying to say for the longest time. Even when back in the day when people were talking about, oh, he's just some Japanese guy. He's, he'll be easy. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, not true. Wait, what the heck? What up, monkey? I mean, I just got an important email from YouTube. Let me check this real quick. It'll only take two seconds. All right, hang on. 20th. Hmm. What? Hang on. Check some. What? Oh, okay, <clears throat> man, I thought that was, <laughs> oh man, I thought that was all bad. Oh, whoo. <laughs> I thought that was all bad. No, all right, Monkey Kung Fu, salutations to you too, my man, what a roar, run for. <laughs> hey, Zeus, what's going on? Damn, that was a trip. All right, it was over, it was on some dumb shit, it was over some dumb shit. It sure sounded important. Sure, I, I thought I caught another um, community guideline strike or whatever. I was about to be like, "Uh oh, this is this is the beginning of the end." Not, it's not. All right, all right. Anyway, um, Kathy, real quick, the, the news stories I want to cover today, along with the other stuff. But Kathy Duva on Kovalev's cruiserweight debut. It can be great or it can be awful. We really don't know. Um. Aram on Fury retiring after White. He might stick around for a big fight. Maybe Joshua or Usyk. So it, it ain't looking like he's going to be around much longer. We might never see him fight again after this White fight. And that's legit, man. That's legit. Um, again, we've been talking about this with Fury, man. If, if Usyk wins, I'm not sure he'll take that fight. He might take it just if AJ wins because that's a the fight he's wanted for so long, the amount of money. Um, uh, hey, Anthony, how long did it take you to start making money off of YouTube? And is it good pay? Uh, no, it's not good pay. Um, definitely not good pay. Even if you doubled it. Even if you doubled what I made my best month ever, it's not good pay. Uh, you double what I made my best month ever. <laughs> like 40 grand, 50, 40, 50 grand tops. So, it's, no, it's not good pay. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it if, like, if you're in it for the money, honestly, because that's not what, you know, it, it, it's a good, like, supplementary income, you know, like a side hustle type thing. Um, yeah. But uh, making money, I mean, it all depends on your channel, man. It all depends on the type of videos you're putting out, how 
how many people get caught up, uh, start watching them. Like the faster you get people watching them and it spreads, the quicker then you could you could start making money. It took me like um man. I was see I was different. When I started, you didn't make money off of YouTube. There was no money. No. No, never made 20 a month. No, 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 no. I'm saying if you doubled my best month ever for a whole year, you would make somewhere between like 40 and 50 a year. No, hell no. Hell no. No. I don't I don't think I've ever even made 20,000 in a year on here actually. Um but if uh so like it was different for me, you know, because when I started, there was no money in this shit. There was, there was no money to be made. There wasn't AdSense or there was none of this, right? So, <laughs> yeah, big difference, Aldo. <laughs> uh, so whenever money came, like you were able to start making money on here, I already had all the requirements. So I it was instant for me that that way. But most people, it's like four months from what I have hear on average, you know, depending on your channel, like uh, how fast. And if... If you want to do YouTube for money, I suggest not boxing. All right. I suggest not doing boxing videos. Go find like the number one or top 10 list of like best uh, categories, most viewed categories of video, and then find something in one of those. Boxing, not the place. Um, <laughs> McDonald's employee. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah. It's so I'm saying it's a good little side hustle. Like, you know, pay a couple bills each month. Like, that's about it, man. Um, a little spending cash or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's not the place for money. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, you'll be making something within probably like four months, I would imagine. Uh, or around about there, you know. But, yeah, it's sadly, it's not the place for money, man. Some people, Muller says, some people do it to get a job in media, boxing media, talk with, yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to do that, first of all, you have to be extremely PC. Like, if you want to move from YouTube to media, you have to be very, very PC. Uh, you can't ever talk, like, I, I... I wrote a thin line where, like, I could say whatever I wanted, and I had good enough relationships where I could get in with some guys, press cred some places, and then other places, they wouldn't give me a cred to save my life. Um, you know, so, yeah, well, I mean, just watch the rescore vid. It's not, not true. Not true. Um... Ugas, I pushed for this fight with Spence, ready to prove everything I've done wasn't a fluke. Bivol, be at his best, ready to perform at the highest level. He he talked about, he said, um, I find it funny, like, when people talk to me about Canelo and they're acting like this guy's indestructible and, like, he can't be beaten. He's just like a Terminator, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, not really. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you don't know what connections that dude had, uh, prior to this YouTube shit. And then second of all, um, again, if you want to, you know, like, like Montero, for instance, right? Like he already had connections before he started this. He only started this because of those connections and people can even hide those connections. So you don't you don't know what that, that that is. Plus, you're gonna have to be very PC. Like, I don't know. It is what it is. And what one out of fucking five thousand people who have attempted that very thing, you know? Because ninety nine point nine percent of people who do this think that I'm gonna become something. Some, some, some. No, you're not. No, you're not. Like, stop it. No, you're not. Like, just. Forget it, man. It's not happening. <clears throat> um, let's see what other stories there were. Um, 
Stewart is not convinced Fury will retire after white defense. I'm not really convinced he will either. Unless Usyk wins, then he might not take it. Because he wants to retire undefeated. Ryan Garcia, break from boxing was good. I've matured, hungry to be the best, begin a dynasty. Just stop it. Uh, Ioka, Donnie Nieta's title fight rematch is ordered by the WBO. Yeah. I don't know if that will um, actually happen, but it's ordered. And, okay, so those are the main stories. Um, yeah, main stories right there. Would you uh, even want to be a boxing commentator or a boxing journalist for ESPN Top Running PBC or Design? Only if I was allowed to speak my mind. If I was allowed to be like their like Letterman or not, um, um, Larry Merchant. If I was allowed to be like their Larry Merchant and say what I wanted, then yeah. But like, I don't, I don't need like, I don't need somebody to help me. So like, um, I don't need. I don't need uh, somebody to give me self-worth. The money ain't going to give me self-worth or anything like that. So, like, no. No. Not, like, the way those guys have to do it. No. Like, if if, if I spoke my mind like uh, Malinaji, I'd just get shit-canned. No. The zone, you just can't do it. So, no. ESPN... Again, if, you know, if I was allowed to be like me, no, because even like a guy like Skip Bayless can't talk his shit, like what he probably really wants to say. No, only if I was allowed to say whatever I fucking wanted without, you know, cusses, obviously. I'll cut, I'd cut the cussing out. That's it. I would cut the cussing out. That's it. Other than that, go after yourself. I don't need you. I don't want none of them people. It's fuck. I thought it would be cool back in the day. That ain't why I started it. But when I had the opportunity, I was like, oh, shit, that might be cool. Go interview these cats. That'd be, But it's I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like, you know, boxing media is what it was when I when I was growing up, like in the, the, the 80s, 90s, the way <clears throat> boxing media was then, where they actually would ask crazy um you know, by today's standards, crazy questions. But you can't do that anymore, man. They'll just say, get the F out of here and have call security to walk you out. Like, nah, get in the way, man. I want nothing to do with that shit. <laughs> well, uh, Vector says the rumor he heard was uh, Gonzalez and Ioka, Roman Gonzalez and Ioka was going to be announced. That doesn't mean it's not. Just because a rematch was ordered by the WBO, well, I mean, actually, I kind of take that back. Unless, unless like, so he's unless there were, he's willing to take step aside money. Unless you know, dude's willing to take step aside money. Okay. Right, like um, Nietas. If Nietas is willing to take step aside money, then it could still happen. But mm, we'd have to see. We'd have to see. I want to ask Larry Merchant questions when he's super C now to see how. <laughs> that's a it's a good idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> what up, still? Nebraska in the house? Ain't Nebraska the Corn Huskers? Right? Sorry, I don't pay attention to football. But if so, Cornhuskers. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I don't no, man. No. I don't know, man. I no. It look it, it, a childhood dream of mine. <clears throat> well, not childhood, like a childhood dream of mine was to be an actual fighter, but uh 
besides that, I would have rather I'd like to be like a trainer. I'd rather be like a boxing trainer. Like a, a, if I could work like. I don't know. I wouldn't mind if there was anything I could do in boxing. I'd have a wish. I'd want to be like someone's um, like, you know, apprentice. Like I've already done that with like my coach and things, but obviously he doesn't have like a stable of world champions and shit. I'd like to, if I would go through another like apprenticeship <clears throat> to be like a, a world champions trainer uh, with like a world champions all throughout his stable, I would be his apprentice to then go from there. That would be awesome. That would be cool. But commentary, no, because I don't even like any of them people. Like, could you imagine having a deal and sit around all these phony ass weasels who you like, I don't even like, you know, no, couldn't do it, man. <laughs> what fighter would I want to work with if I wasn't? I mean, I'd want to bring one up. Um, uh, don't make it really don't matter, man. I'd want somebody like young though. I'd want if they're for going professionals, I'd want someone young. Um any of the any of the good young fighters, honestly. <clears throat> oh, do you, what do you what do you mean, hand history vault? What are your thoughts if the fight is announced on Golovkin and Marata, Gonzalez Ioka? Do you mean like on the broadcast? Like, the, right there, if those dudes, um, like, Gonzalez and Ioka are, say, like, in the building or it gets announced right then and there, like, on that. Which is possible, huh? Which is possible, I guess. Um, I mean, man, I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it. I. Th oh, man. Okay. Uh. Who do, who would I favor, dude? It's gonna sound wild, but I would still favor Roman Gonzalez. I do, I do. He's he looked so damn sharp in his last fight, and it's not just. <clears throat> I mean, he made that kid look like he didn't belong. He made Martinez look like he did not belong, and that guy. He is he's a world champion. He is a world class fighter. He's just an aggressive ass dude, but the way that Gonzalez made him look like a bum cuz he did look like a bum. Cuz and I'll be honest, I not he's not a bum. I'm not saying Martinez is a bum. I'm just saying Roman made him look like a bum. So um the the way that he did that shows me that he's no, 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 not on the fight, not on that, not a short notice one, just like they announced that the fight's on officially, on that card official, and that it'll be two, three months down the road or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, I'll hate on black fighters all I want if that's what I want to do, Ray, fucking dope fiend ass Ray, 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 and Pook, I'll do it all day long if that's what I want to do. I think Ioka is the toughest fight possible for him, in my opinion, even above Inouye. Really? Um, I don't. I think Inouye's tougher. But, you know, can agree or disagree. Uh, still be really tough. You know what I mean? But am I going to stay up? No, I probably won't stay up. I'll just wake up early, though. I'll just wake up early. Uh, so I, I'll be watching it. I don't know if I, I don't know about a stream. What do you know? Do you know what time it is on our, our time zone MMA? Cause I'm in the time zone, same time zone as you. Do you know which one it, it's in? Like, you know what I mean? What time it is for us? Hey, man, I hope it gets made. I hope it gets made. Can, hope, can only hope. Can only hope. 
I'll drop the link if anyone wants to jump on. Because uh, this is kind of just an anything goes stream. I was going to put it in the title, anything goes, but um, I didn't have the space. This starts at 5 a.m. Eastern. Oh, my God, man. Are a lot of people staying up for it or getting up for it, getting up early for it? I'm going to be watching it. I just don't know if I'll be doing a stream for it. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to see, man. I'd have to see. Five AM starts seven forty AM. Main event oh main event is like seven thirty AM. Alright, that's not bad. Golovkin and Sabrina Golovkin and Morata. Seven thirty AM for the main card. That ain't that bad. Um Who's the UFC vector? Alright, seven thirty uh, you know what? I probably will be doing a stream for it then. I probably will be doing a stream for it. Cause that's not bad. So seven thirty, shit. I'll probably start at like seven. <laughs> You're on the West Coast. Oh, 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 brutal. It's brutal for the West Coast. Yeah, four in the morning. It'd be better to stay up for you. You know, run for. It'd be better to stay up for you. <laughs> Now, yeah, I mean, yeah, again, again, I was watching, um, I don't know, some like boxing writers do a little interview, <clears throat> interview each other, ask each other questions. Like, I don't know who they were. Well, I think it was Kevin Ioli doing the interview with some other guy. I didn't know who he was, right? And yeah, you're right. I don't want to miss the whole, the whole card. I did It was stacked, Vector. You're right. No, that is a good point. Oh, and if I just watch the main event, well, I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. We'll figure it out. We got Ryan Garcia the night, you know, that same night before Saturday night. <clears throat> and then Sunday morning, that'd be pretty rough. Maybe just catch a couple hours of sleep and then do it. Uh, yeah, I just saw that, Jesus, that uh, Rashid Ellis signed with PBC. Uh, it, he'll get good fights. He'll get good fights. Because, look, PBC has to give their guys good fights now. They really do because uh, – Showtime or Fox isn't really buying garbage anymore off of him. They both made it clear. So that he's not going to be getting any like showcase fights. He'll get he'll get a couple lower level, like you, you know, uh second tier second tier guys, right? Like you know, B level guys or whatever, whatever, second tier, you know, top 10 type fighters, top 10, top 15 caliber. Then they'll give them like one big one or two big fights, um, which is what they have to do with everyone now. Because either if they're putting you in the ring, um, maybe they'll put him on like the undercards of pay-per-views, co-mains of pay-per-views, or he'll be like the main event on decent, um, decent, you know, caliber, you know, decent, uh, you know, the, the Showtime – Showtime Championship boxing cards, where they have they haven't been crap cards lately. They've been decent cards, you know. They haven't been showcases in a while. And if they, if they are, um, you know, really good fights, they just put them on pay per view. But he's not going to be a pay per view guy because 
you know, stalling, not, you know. Abel Ramos, Lucas Santa Maria, Jamal James versus Ellis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the Jamal James on. I like the Jamal James on. Um, Abel Ramos. You know, I mean, I can get with that. Oh, here's MMA. <laughs> MMA. Yo, 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 what's going no, on? No, my man. Not much, man. But oh, when I was stuff. telling you about, like, um, like if you wanted to be a commentator or something, like, I was thinking about that, like, um, when I get older or whatever, like, not as, like, a, not, like, my start-off job, but uh, it's, like, you like boxing and also you're getting paid on top of that, right? So, I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, but I probably, I probably, like, I don't know if I could, like, you know, hold back my hold back my thoughts though, like on certain fighters and stuff like that. I well, probably, yeah. I mean, it's kind of just what you have to do, though. You know, I probably start going off on Canelo on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is what it is. I mean, that's that's the name of the game. Unfortunately, nowadays, again, the the commentary with these dudes, like the. Well, the lack of good commentary nowadays, it wouldn't exist really like, uh, oh, where'd he go? It, you know, look, you, you're always going to have like these dick riders uh, like Mannix and Kellerman or whatnot. And look, have them. That's fine, right? But give the other side of the coin too. Like <clears throat> back when you had Kellerman, you had, you know, uh, um, uh, Jeez! Oh my God! You had the uh, the other guy to to even him out. How am I blanking on his name? I was you just talking about him. not Letterman. Uh, Let Merchant, Larry Merchant. So you know, it, when they had a Kellerman, they had a Merchant, right? That's all they need. You know, have your Mannix, your Chris Mannix, but have somebody else who is more. Uh, more unafraid to say you know what they think or just the the other side of the coin not everything a fighter does can be amazing every fighter has strengths and weaknesses and all they do now is just talk about their strengths and the guy can be garbage and they talk to you like he's a level you know it's it's ridiculous man um do I consider Crawford A level? Uh, in a way, in a way I do, and in a way I don't. Um, he hasn't. He's never beaten. Like he's never dominated. Uh, like primed up B level, like B play. He's never dominated. Like. A primed up B B plus level guy, right? He's never done it. He's never dominated one ever. He's fought, you know. He fought two of them, all right, because Porter wasn't even in his prime, so he fought two of them. Didn't dominate either one. That's Kavaluskas and um, Postal, right? Uh, got dropped by one. You know, was getting even. Hitting it and out, like, was just ran like a bitch from uh, Crawford. Um, if I don't think Crawford's an A-level, I'm explaining why, asshole. You want to come on here and debate it? Because I'll fucking criticize. I'll go hard as fuck on him. And let's see what you can say besides, he A-level. He A-level. He A-level. He dominated both of them. Did you even watch the fight? Did you even watch the fight? Either of the fights. He ran like a bitch versus Postal. How can you dominate a guy you ran like a bitch from? How? Do you know what domination means? It means you beat the shit out of someone. They didn't fucking lay many punches on you. How fucking Postal win so many rounds and push Crawford back all night? Does he run? Did he run when he fought the likes of fucking Hank Lundy? Thomas DeLorme? No. 
So clearly he don't like to run. He only does it when he has to. He stopped Mean Machine. Oh, and after Mean Machine gassed. And what does that fucking matter? Mean Machine ain't shit. Like he's a good puncher. Decent little guy. But he ain't like some fucking elite dude. What? Hold on. What has he ever done to prove to you that he is a level? He's chinny. His punch technique is atrocious. He gets hit too often. You know? Posto wouldn't let his hands go. What's he supposed to do when the guy's running? Just fucking chase him and shoot shots and wait and run into a Bud's a pure counterpuncher. So what's he supposed to do? Just he, Posto has to take all the chances. Now Posto has to take all the chances, right? Why didn't Bud let his fucking hands go? Huh? Man, no, you're fucking racist. Or bias. Or both. Shit, you can be white and racist. It's against your own people. That's fucking ridiculous. I'm about to give my reasons as to why. In some ways he is A-level, and in some ways he ain't. And he's just, you a biased racist. Like, go fuck yourself. Fuck up off my channel, clown. Weirdo. Yeah, not to mention with a weight bully through two of his fucking weight divisions. People are fucking... Man. Yeah, most of these current Western fighters, American, mostly. Um, even not just most. Most of the Western ones in general ain't A-level. Yeah, A-level... A you're going to show that you are separate from everybody. You know, like Prime Golovkin showed he was separate from everybody. Usyk is showing you he's separate from everybody. Loma, you know, shows he's separate from everybody. Um, Pacquiao, Prime Pacquiao, showing you he's separate from everybody. You see the, like that these guys, you know, they're not B-level, clearly. Clearly, because every time they fight a B-level guy, they destroy them you know they destroy them but don't do that you know if you gotta run from a b-level guy you guys shit on crawford stop disrespecting the sport how's that disrespecting the sport how about stop dick riding fighters because that's disrespecting the sport i don't disrespect the sport i love the sweet signs it's fighters i, I can give two fucks about that's who I can give. You know why? Because I don't, you know, worship other men. That's why. I don't worship other men. I love the sweet science. But I don't dick ride other men. Unlike you, of course. Look, he's like, what Crawford is is great at, you know, just the, all the, the, the things he is great at is, you know, he, he can, um, he's not an accurate puncher, but he can sneak, sneak punches into spots that other guys aren't likely to be able to sneak them in on you. Uh, you know, at, at certain spots. Um, he is extremely fast. Uh, he's extremely quick. Again, though, not accurate, which is why, you know, he, he'll swing five, one will land. Um, uh, you know, I mean, again, little, short, stubby-armed Sean Porter against, you know, tall, long Bud, and Bud was having fits with him. Until he landed one shot. You know, lands one shot. He outthinks his opponents. No, he won't outthink them. No, he doesn't. What the fuck are you talking about? Where do you get this shit from? He just avoids them at all costs. It makes them tire them. Look, when the other guy is forced to do put on put all the, the pressure on and make the fight, that guy gasses out, all right? A lot quicker than say Crawford will. Porter was going to gas out before Bud. 
Postal was going to gas out before Bud. Mean Machine was going to gas out before Bud. Then when they gas out, so they're at like, you know, 60, 70% of their tank, he's still at like 70, 80. And that gives him that edge. Then he can start letting his hands go. But he, he can't do that from round one. He can't do that from round one. You know, you know what A-level guys can do? They can start doing that from round one. That's a level. Yeah, his defense ain't good. He don't have defense. It's run. That's his defense. Nah, Crawford doesn't run, bro. But I was just looking at. I was looking at um, Porter fight. He, he wasn't running. Well, I'm not talking about that fight, but yes, he does run. Yes, he does. I think you're just basing it off of the postal fight because well, it put like a bad taste of, it in your mouth. Fucking knee machine too. And yeah, I just said, did he run versus uh, Hank Lundy? Did he run versus Delore May? No, because he's not gonna run versus low level opposition. Which I said is, that shows you he would rather not run. But when he does run, it's showing you that those guys are too good for him to stand his ground. So yeah, he does run when that cali- when the caliber of opposition gets stepped up. Okay. So he does run, yes. But then, right with the uh, Brook fight, like people are not giving him credit. I understand, right? Right. So, but then with the with the Brook and Khan fight, Brook looked great. So I mean, because it's Khan. Yeah, but he did, he did. Great. He just battered Brook. Did or you see his defense? Khan. He looked like Floyd Mayweather. His defense, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because saying. it's Khan. Like he he looked. He was slipping even when he was scale Brook. Skeletor broke versus Crawford. He was still slipping Crawford's shots and making a pay. He has great timing. That's what that was Brooks' number one asset his whole career was timing. So, so yeah, maybe gonna make you so, miss to make you pay. So maybe Crawford was just that good because no, because he was slipping Crawford's punches and hitting them. Yes, but we all know in the early rounds. Crawford, you know, really doesn't uh, turn it up. Well, he you was know, throwing he, his punches. He was trying to hit the man. Like it's not he Crawford was usually he was trying Crawford, to hit him. Crawford usually you loses the early rounds. But, well, then that's bad. If you're a level and you can't fuck it and you're losing your rounds when you're throwing punches, you are throwing punches. You're leading. You're throwing at Skeletor, bro, and you're you're losing those rounds. Well, that's bad. That's bad. That means yeah, but he he not all that bad because you're priced to win. But it just shows you ain't a level. Would Floyd Mayweather have lost those rounds? No. Exactly. Yeah, but he has a different style than Mayweather. He has, a, he has a different style than Mayweather. Well, well, that's why I'm going down a list of various styles. with Errol Spence. Well, Earl Spence does Skeletor lose. Bro. Same one in the ring. No. With Pacquiao four seven prime Pacquiao. Prime Pacquiao, hell no. I'm everybody. I'm oh, every fighter. I named Prime because Crawford was in his prime. So prime Pacquiao. No. Okay. Okay. So what are we doing now? Variety of styles. They all ain't. None of them are losing rounds for Skeletor, bro. Yeah, you gotta turn your background TV off. All right. All right. It's not gonna happen. He's just not a good offensive guy, so he has to gas you out. He needs you to gas out before he can turn it up. It's that simple. And to me, you know, that ain't a level. It's just not. Like, imagine like a – yeah, imagine uh, even – um, I mean – even like a prime Thurman. He ain't losing them rounds. And Crawford's faster than Thurman. So, like, what's that tell you? It means Crawford is exposing his hand. Like, he's showing, he's telegraphing his punches just enough to where Brooke is able to see him. He knows the jab's coming. He can see it and then come back over the top. He can knock it down and jab you right back. But he shouldn't have been able to do that when he's drained. He should not have been able to do that when he's drained. So, when you do land a shot on him and he's all fucked up all of a sudden, like, yeah, that's because he's drained. 
I mean, yeah, they ain't got really shit to do with Crawford being great. Look, and another thing, if Crawford would so, if if Crawford is so, if like such an A level guy, why the fuck is he draining Brook? Why? Why? Because he don't even believe he can beat that guy if he comes in at his best. He was already bringing him down a weight. He was already bringing him down from 5'4", which he had moved up to, bringing him back down. Is it better? And still fucking drained him on top of that. Is it better now, Ant? No, still fairly well. I I can hear it, yeah, so no. Um, Yeah, Bud has A-level athleticism. He does, exactly, yes. A-level athleticism for sure. Um, and like a level, yeah, like speed, quickness, uh, explosiveness, all that is a level, yeah. But like on a pound for pound skill set, can you still hear it? Very slightly, it's, it's all right now. All right, all right we can deal yeah. with it. What's going on, Super Anderson? All those, what's going on, man? But you know. Yeah, so I I'm set to go to the um better be of Smith, but I just need to wait until the tickets are on sale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so But again, Definitely. dude still hasn't told me why he's A level. I think he is. You know, I think most people most people have him on his pound on their pound for pound list. Pound, you know? pound for pound ain't necessarily a level when there's not that many great fighters out there, though. I think let's and not you know think there is. I have them on their pound for pound list. There is three pound, divisions is, and was undisputed. Nothing to do with who he beat. I think there's like nine guys who were actually be Postal and Porter in your pound for pound. I think there's there there's nine guys who are pound for pound. That ten like the tenth guy pound for pound is kind of hard to pick. Exactly, exactly. So in like that era, yeah, I would put Crawford on pound for pound list because who the fuck else you gonna put? You know? Yeah, like I could go. Let me the guys who are like like without doubt pound for pound. Let me have a look. Usyk, uh, Clenello, Chocolatito, Inoue, Estrada, Taylor, Ioka, Lomachenko, uh, Crawford, and then the tenth you could, you know, go with who you want, and that that was in like any order, like you don't. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, he is pound for pound in like this kind of an era. But yeah, go, but like back in the days, he would throw not him be. into like. 98? He, he would have even... never been undisputed. He would have probably already yeah. done been fucked up multiple times. I think you in this like era of um 140, Crawford would have a hard time becoming undisputed. Yeah, he would. Yeah, because he 140, ran he had to fight all these guys. 140 is stacked right now, bro. Yeah, why why did he as soon as he became undisputed just dip right when all this like he had all exactly. of these fight and he could have like, I, I would have wanted to see him against Taylor, Progress, Ramirez, a bunch of them, man. Yeah. Even Cepeda, that would have been a good fight. Um yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, so what I mean but, you know an, an American he goes, What a, American boxer actually has good skill and is fundamentally sound. Virgil Ortiz, dude. He's American. But he's Mexican American, though. But yeah, Mexican. He's American. And Italian American is still American. All right, so I'm let's see. Uh, who do you who do you think the best black American fighter is right now? Um, you got Crawford, you got Spence, you got um I, I in what way? Just best all around or best like that? Like best yeah, best skill. fundamental skills. Okay, okay. So I was gonna say okay. Um who else? Um got Wilder. I'm just playing. Uh, probably Jermel Charla. Jermel over yeah. Crawford. 
Yeah, yeah, because he's a little bit better with the fundamentals. He's not like great with them, but yeah, I have him better. I think he's better. That than fight, Rafa. that fight versus Castan is very intriguing. Yeah, it's very like that's an actual 50 50 fight. Like the fights that we have coming up, yeah, like you know, there is a clear favorite, but it's still the competitive. But this fight is like 50 50. Or maybe a Keith Thurman. Um, I get it. He's you know not Keith. Yeah, but Keith, he's done anymore. Yeah, but Father Time Thurman. Yeah, yeah, he's done. Um, there's really like uh, I, I there's a lot of prospects that you know could revive Black American boxing. You know. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, even like uh, a guy like Steve Fulton. You know? Oh, Steve Fulton, he, yes, yes, he's good. Yeah, he's up there he as well. Is. Yeah, he is. Um, And then who else? You just got Anya Shakur after that, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'd put Shakur above Haney. Yeah. I was thinking about Shakur, but then Fulton popped in my mind. So like then... black, black American boxers used to be on top, but now, you know, uh, like Europeans and and other um like other you know cultures and stuff started getting to boxing now and you know hold on real quick uh Charlo better than Crawford's fundamentals this is your guy's leader uh bro you have no idea what fundamentals even means you want to come on the panel bro I dropped the link we could break we could break down each guy's fundamentals. Real, your mom is our real, leader. Real easy. Your, your mom is our leader, buddy. Yeah. And no one has a leader because we're actual men. We don't exactly. follow. You, you live in a foster care. Center. Sorry, you follow other dudes. That's just your projection from your fucking angle, dude. Your dad went to go get the milk. Yeah, so now he looks up to other men. Yeah, he looks up to Crawford. <laughs> I mean, the dude ha he has no defense. J Jamel absolutely has better defense. Um, uh -huh. He has better punch technique. He has better upper body movement. Again, Crawford is just longer and faster. I think Crawford needs to um like know how to you know. Like be patient, cause you always once again a brawl. When you like, when you uh, you know, when you get him off of his counter punch, and he, he starts brawling, and that's when he's open. No, we we watched the uh, Benavidez uh, Crawford fight on here, mm -hmm. and it was fucking just, ugh. like he's, dude, it was so terrible. It was so terrible how, I mean, the best punches of the fight up until the end were all landed by Benavidez. I mean, Benavidez is one, two. Because Benavidez, every time Crawford would jab, Benavidez would come right over the top of it with his own jab and then a straight right. Boom, boom. Like, and, and this is the Benavidez. Crawford up. This is the Benavidez. The one leg. This is the Benavidez who looked terrible in his last fight. He was terrible well. in the Crawford fight. It was still yeah. enough to fucking batter him. Yeah. And, bro, Crawford was fighting a guy who got shot. Literally, yeah. coming off of being shot. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. Do, do you find Crawford entertaining? Yes. Well, it like, I do, but he's not an entertaining fighter. I find him entertaining just because his fights all are like, you know, could this guy lose this time? I don't want him to because I want to see him in these other fights. So it's like the the edge because you know if someone lands a big punch, it could be all, all that shit could be over. So that part of it is like uh, gets your like nerves up. You know what I mean? He's not an exciting fighter, no. But it's like uh, like Canelo or something. He he can be an exciting fighter, right? Uh, you you have exciting fighters, even if Canelo's fighting like a plant where you know he's gonna win. Like the fight itself can still be exciting, right? Uh, how do how do you see Crawford's the opposite, you know, of that? How like, do you see the um 
How do you see the Thurman fight turning out? The which one? The Thurman and Bud fight turning out. How do you see it? Yeah. Um. <laughs> I like that fight. I do. Okay. Uh, I would. I favor Crawford. Uh, towards the end of the fight, but I I see him stopping. I see him even stopping Thurman with a. Uh, he's gonna drop him a couple times towards the end. Yeah, I could see he's that. Gonna hurt him to the body. That's going to give him uh, – that's going to slow Thurman down all he needs. Then he'll be able to open up on him. Yeah. And now uh, Thurman has a bigger target because he cut off his hair. But that's four. It's <laughs> four. It's huge. But the, he can't get hit by Thurman, though, man. He can't. Like, he can't. Yeah, but Thurman couldn't even knock out Barrios. Yeah, well, that don't mean nothing. That's Barrios. I mean – Crawford can be knocked out, especially by a guy like Thurman. Uh, I don't know, man. How do I know? No, I said I don't know, man. Oh, oh, because he uh, he's chinny. He's chinny. Like Barrio saying a chinny dude. Uh, Just because we saw what we saw with Tank, don't mean nothing. Um, But the thing is, though, right? He was never hurt. Cavaluskis, right? Just because. Crawford got dropped by Cavaluskis. Cavaluskis did hurt Virgil Ortiz, right? Yeah. He's so, Cavaluskis... He's in the welterweight he's, division. Yeah, he's a big puncher. Yeah. So, is that really, like, that, so you know, about... concerning? No, no, not really. No, it's the fact that how... Uh, it's not... No, I don't use that as, like... I mean, it's a sign that he can be hurt, first of all. Like, he don't have no iron chin or anything. So, if you don't have an iron chin, like, you can be knocked out. Uh, but the fact that he was just landing on him too much, that's what did it for me. Like, that's mm-hmm. what, to me, is more alarming than the being dropped. Like, he and wouldn't be dropped if he wasn't getting hit so fucking often. Like, and people saying, oh, Spence is going to... Uh, is going to KO Crawford. Let's get this straight. Spence, ever since he stepped up his competition, he has not stopped anybody, okay? Even Spence said himself, I haven't stopped anybody in a while. Mm -hmm. So how was that? I think that fight will be close and will go to the decision. You know, depending on what platform it is, um, I could see somebody getting robbed. I could see maybe a draw even, you know. But it, it literally depends on what time it happens because Crawford's only getting older. Oh, Aldo, how, how, how can you say Bud has a solid chin um, when, you know, just the fact that if he did, he wouldn't be so worried about getting hit by these guys? No, he wouldn't. And True. when he was fighting at 35 versus Gamboa, if any, if I'm going to bring up anything, because you could say he was weight trained or whatever, but that was so early in his lightweight career. He wasn't all that drained, man. He wasn't. Like he wasn't having a tough time making thirty-five yet, so he was still just fine. Uh, and that's a blown up. Uh, it's not iron, but it's not. It isn't bad. No, it's not bad. Um, but solid tends to mean like good, like good. Um, and I'm not so sure if I would. You know, what is Crawford's best skill? Speed. Speed. Okay, okay. Speed. For sure. You don't think it's counter punching abil- ability? Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, that's his best. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Yeah. I was thinking ability like gift or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is. He's a counter puncher, pure counter puncher for sure. But then look at a guy like Marquez, pure counter puncher. Still brought the action. Still could. You know, stay. If you land one on him, he's landing one on you. You land yeah, one, but on him, Crawford, he's one on you. Crawford does that. He does get in the brawls. No, he, he likes the brawl. Versus, versus bombs. Marquez could do it versus the elite. That's an A level. But I mean, though, he did drop postal. You know, he did get the fans. You know, uh, 
he did give him a stanky leg once, though. The other knockdown, no, he grabbed him in the back of the head and threw him down. That's technically illegal. It's called grabbing. Yeah, but he did hurt Postal. The one shot where he hurt him and Postal went like running away and then like crouched and got knocked over. Um, that one, I'll count. Uh, the other one, no. It was definitely not a, an actual knockdown, but Tony Weeks called it one bullshit because it was a close fight. Um, did you bring that up in the interview? No, no. Uh, okay. I you forgot? Yeah, no. Okay. Um, but again, uh, when the guy, you're not taking the fight to Postal at all. Postal is having to take all the chances. Like, yeah. What the fuck? Uh, of course you're going to be like, catch him out of position because you're not giving him anything to work off of. Like Crawford wasn't leading it, it, fucking, you know, enough to... He was leading with a pot shot and that, that, that would jump back and run some more. Like, post all and, and you saw jab, 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 power punch, but like chasing his full down. And while he's running, sticking out his tongue with the nan and the nan and shit. Yeah, you saw in the, in the jumping in with the shot. It's like, okay, yeah, you caught a guy out of a position because you're not engaging. You like, saw in the uh, last round, he was literally running. Like, he was like, and sticking his tongue out and taunting him. It's like, I'll never call a dude like that A level. I won't. I don't you should never post those fucking B level. He's B level. Like what the hell, man? But that Taylor fight and he, and he loses to most other B level guys. So that Taylor fight could still happen. And because yeah. Taylor moves up, he could become mandatory for Crawford and then boom, it could still happen. But will top rank still want to do you know, uh, business with, but yeah. Well, if he signs with PBC, it ain't gonna happen. I mean, yeah, I can't see that happening. Unless it goes to purse bid, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but um, I don't know. I'm thinking we might end up getting Catterall and Taylor again for yeah. you know, like a catchweight fight. Um, no, nah, I don't. I don't see that because what's the name? I I think um, Teofimo will be. I think Teofimo is going to become champion because where at yeah, one forty. Oh, so you think Catterall will try and go after? Because check this out, right? They did Catterall dirty the 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 W O W O, and they have Teofimo number two and this other guy number one, right? And uh, somebody in uh, Tufimo's camp said that in July or early August, he's Tufimo's gonna be fighting that that guy for the mandatory of that WBO title. Who is it? Who said that? No, I said who's the guy that they're talking about? Because I saw uh, the dude that they're trying to I, get him to fight. I, you but... can look at the WBO uh, website. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. yeah. Yo, what's up, Durden? Oh, yeah, where we at? All right, well, too late. Oh, jeez, I went to well too late. Look at what uh, month you have. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Organization, WBO, month. Um, should we go April? Uh, what month are we in? Uh, no, go third. Go to um March. Okay. Right, here we go. Liam Paro. Liam. Yeah, Paro. Li yeah, that that's who's Teo Fimo's gonna be fighting for the mandatory belt, and then he's gonna fight for the vacant belt. Probably. Yeah, makes sense. He's an yeah. Australian. He's an Australian. Yeah, so he, he's literally getting an easy 
title, bro. Well, either way, I mean, Catterall fighting um, Taylor doesn't matter because they'd be doing it at a welterweight catchweight. I don't know. It's up to Catterall, really. If Catterall says he wants it, Taylor will kind of have to do it because he already said he would. So, Yeah, know. I guess so. But I guess it's up to Catterall. If I was Catterall, I certainly would. But then maybe, because there's no belts on the line, maybe you look at it like, fuck that, because what if I actually lose? Then it kind of erases what I did. Uh, me, uh, meanwhile, like I can keep this. Um, I am the real undisputed 40 champ pushing and going that way. He has like <clears throat> uh, a, a reason to demand fights with anybody he wants because he can just keep saying i'm the real i'm the real top dog like you want to be the man at 40 you have to see me because everyone knows i am the real like undisputed uh, 140 pounder so yeah yeah well yeah it'll be vacant once taylor leaves 140 i mean he basically already left but i don't think he's made it like a hundred percent like official yeah. drop the belt so far um but then, yeah, even you know, if Teofimo said he ain't ever fighting there again, so why wouldn't you just drop him? Right? But even if Teofimo, right, if he becomes champion, he will still have to uh, fight a tough mentor, probably you know, a couple months after becoming champion. And I see Teofimo losing to any of the top guys at one forty. I don't care what anybody says. He loses to Progress. He loses to Ramirez. He loses to Jose Cepeda. He loses to. Like all the top guys, man. Uh, the Catterall too. I agree. Any guy, any top guy who comes to win is crushing them. They're fucking them up. Exactly. Maybe not crushing them, but they're beating them. No, they're beating. R- Ramirez him. crushes him. Yeah, unless he, yes, unless he gets, you know, he needs to get with a new trainer, and he needs to take his comeback slow. He needs to actually not go right for the big fights. He needs to take a, a couple like you know, third tier opposition fights, like technically showcase oh. fights at 40, just to build his confidence back up. I think his his dad got him to as far as he could get him, I think. You yes. know, his dad has nothing left uh, for him, you know. He has not, like, you can look in the corner, you know, in the Cambosis fight, what he was saying. He didn't really have anything for it to you. He didn't really have anything to say for it to you. But, yeah. oh, knock him out. You know, his dad proved like he that. belongs nowhere near a championship corner. He was literally saying, what is taking you so long to knock this guy out? Go out there and kill him. All right, yeah. we need you five seconds later. All right, we need you to take your time this round. Stay back. Just let him go. Bipolar trainer. Like, what are you Bipolar doing? trainer. You know, fucking conflicting info like, all in a 10-second a- Exactly. Period. You're going to yeah. tell your fighter – to go out there and be reckless, and then the and then the second round after that, it's like, oh, calm down. What are you doing? Like, yeah. what? You just told it to do that. Like, what? Yeah. Like exactly. he's bipolar, bro. He's a bipolar cracker. Yeah, he's a fucking narcissistic crackhead for sure. Yeah, probably has yeah. bipolar. Yeah, he's a nutcase, man. Get him away from you, and and also like he needs to he needs to man the fuck up and keep his dad away from him. Period. Like, but, don't I mean, let him be, that, like, that's going to be hard to do. You let him near me in camp because he's going to fill your head with all kind of bullshit. He's going to fuck with you, put stress on you. I like, get it. I, but, I and, let him be my like. That, that's going to be hard to do. Or anything. Just out. Get away from me. I'll pay your rent. I'll take care of you, dude. Just leave me the fuck alone. I'll come see you on the holidays or after I win my fights. I'll come see you and don't talk boxing to me. Like I would, I'd be like, we ain't talking no boxing, and because it's just like Roy Jones and his dad, right? Where Roy was like, even though I was a man, my dad kept seeing me as this little boy he could boss around. Like he, he was like, I had to always be below him. He was always the the one who who got to tell me how to live my life, and you can't have that. You can't have that. Maybe if you have like a good father. But Roy's father was like extremely abusive, and Tio's family or Tio's father is abusive as well. Maybe not physically, I'm not even saying that, but he's a hundred percent mentally abusive. You can't have that. 
and that exactly he's clearly intimidated by his father so which is why you can't have him near you like get him the fuck away from you because he needs to spread his wings he needs to spread his wings become his own man that's it you know he could tell his father look i'm the fucking man now you are below me dude like i'm it is what it is like take it how you want it but I'm, you're below me. I'll beat the fuck out of you. I make more money than you. I'm smarter than you. Just run it down. Like, I'm not on drugs like you. Just run it down. Like, that's why you're below me. Like, break him. Like, break Senior's um, grip on Tio. Just cra- break it. You have to feel bad for him, DP. As much as I clown a dude and I don't even like him, a part of me does feel bad for him. Like, you can't, you can't have parents like that around you. It's horrible. Um, what made you on a box hit? Um, my parents. <laughs> I didn't even want to at first. It just made me. Um, but then I started to like it, so I'm glad they did. Uh, but yeah, not so nothing made no one really. Uh, yeah, I was just like kind of forced to, and then liked it. Started to like it. But it, shit. Like, you know, you're not allowed to box uh, until you're eight here in America, but I was, we were doing like pit fights, you know what I mean? Like uh, backyard uh, boxing matches with like parents and dude, we were like five, six, seven, eight, and the, all like the sixth grade, all the grade schoolers, from a, a variety, not all the grade schoolers, but kids from each grade. They'd meet it. We'd all meet in my house because we had like a little boxing set up and all the equipment in my basement. And they'd start being like, you versus you, you versus you, you versus you. Some kids would get in there. They'd be bawling, not wanting to box. Like they'd be crying so damn hard. I mean. Oh, so you, you basically uh, had like a little grade. boxing ring in your house. Huh? whooped his ass. He, he ran. He threw the gloves off. And ran and like through the circle. They had like a little circle around it. He fucking ran out up the steps. I went running after him. He turned around. We were in my front yard now. I punched him straight into the dick. And he Wait, went, Oh, why did you punch him? <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> Joey, I'm not going to say his last name. Wait, why, why did you punch him? What did he do? Uh, now he he jumped out of the the ring. He jumped out of the. We were having like a little um boxing tournament. His kids, uh, with the parents, and he threw the gloves off in the middle of our match and ran out of it and ran. And for, for whatever reason, it was just my mindset there. I fucking you know went running right after him because I was winning. I was in second grade. I was beat. He was two grades. Up. I was beating up a fourth grader. I was like, yeah. I wanted to have like. I wanted to really win. Like, I didn't want to have to quit. I didn't think, I didn't understand like quitting was as good as a win. You know, so I was like, he fucking ran. Like, he just took this away from me. So I'm running after him. <laughs> he, he <laughs> <punched>. <laughs> That's what. That's funny. Uh, it's funny. That's funny. That's funny. He was a cool kid, though. I mean, he had asshole parents as well, but. You, you still talk to him some? No, no. I, I I used to talk to his little brother. He ended up moving, um, but his little brother uh, stayed around for a while. And uh, his little brother became a model, like a real live, like model, model, male model. Um, okay, okay. Talked to him for a while, but uh, then he left. Okay. I see, I see their mother. Their mother, I see around every now and then. Yeah, that, that usually happens. Like a, a lot of people, you know, move and go to different towns yeah. stuff like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, no doubt. Canelo's indestructible since there's no cash cow to steal. Uh, oh yeah, you saw that? Like what Bill was saying that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All I thought about was the dude Frankie interviewing him. <laughs> I swear from Frankie from Fight Fight Hype. I swear that's what he was talking about. Because every that whole interview, like that he kept doing with him, uh, the, the Frank he was the interviewing him, he just did nothing but bring up Canelo and talk about how, like, you know, Canelo is just so amazing. But I, I bet there's been other, like, you know, 
um, news outlets, maybe even from Mexico, who have came up and done interviews. But he's just like, dude, like, what the hell? Like, he's like, I find it funny that people think this guy can't be beaten. He's indestructible. Like, yeah, it's like, I don't get it either. But yeah, arguably could have lost a bunch of fights. So how's he indestructible? Like, what the fuck? Uh, the oh, uh, guys pull up. I'm indestructible. They should be bringing up the judges, making pull sure. Pull up this. Uh, down. Pull up the pull up the thing I put in the private chat. It's of Bivol on the pads. It's the most recent one. Oh, okay, nice. I don't know if I saw this. Alright. Um, here we go. Turn the volume on. It's from Fight Hub TV if anyone wants to see it. He's working on that left hook for sure. Because he's really trying to split that guard. And as his hands, once he splits it and he brings them back together, he's trying to come back around them. Yeah. His job will break Canelo's high guard. Yeah. That's the one thing uh, Benavidez said he was great at. You know, Benavidez fights out of the high guard, too. Ooh. He, goes, he would split my high guard every time. He goes, you know, he, he just was trained to know how to split the high guard. He's looking uh, fast. He's done it first. Everybody. But I want to see Bivol sit down as punches more. Yeah, yeah. When I heard the, the stories of him knocking out the sparring partners, hurting sparring partners, that, that made me wonder, like, are they training for extra power, which to knock out Canelo, which they need, and they, they're going to, they need to do it to get out the, the W um, or are they bringing in, or do they have too many lower level sparring partners? Cause if I hear you're hurting sparring partners, the, the first thing I come think of is well, your sparring partners probably ain't all that good. Um, or, you know, you are training to knock somebody out, like training to knock a dude out. Um, you know, like Mike Tyson, he would be, you know, he, he would hurt sparring partners, but that's because he was training to knock people out. Um, and Biffle isn't that guy. He never... You know, trains to knock someone out. So why is he all of a sudden hurting sparring partners? Makes me think they are are training uh, for him to sit down on his punches. Yeah, that that's what I would hope. You yeah. know, because yeah, see the hardest punch he's throwing out of all this is that left hook. Oh. Oh. There we go. There we go. All right. Sitting down on him a little more now. Hi, hi. There we go. One month left. One month. And we finally get to see this fight happen, man. Man, I'm trying to... 
Since I didn't watch any boxing this week, I keep feeling like that Golovkin fight's like in it, like two days. I've watched so long like, without I watch in boxing, it feels like my brain is telling me a fight soon, a fight soon. Because I didn't watch that Sandor Martin fight, did you? There we go. I like that bag. I really do. I like that bag there. When people are disingenuous and cannot debate actual facts, they tend to lean into slurring, name calling, defaming the other debate debater's character. That just shows their intellectual flaws. Yeah. I mean, second you name call in a debate, like if you're the first to name call in a debate, you lost. Martin won by yeah, I heard. I heard it was like he dominated too, from what I heard. Um yeah, not nothing. Yeah. I didn't think it would be anything uh, special. So, um, dude, I ain't been to a fight in years, years. Um, I mean, big fight. I've been to some local fights, like, but the last big fight I was at was fucking Golovkin Lemieux. Am I going to Canelo? No, no. I, if the I only go to fights on the East Coast. I don't fly, uh, and I'm not driving that far. Uh, better be Ev and Joe Smith. I will be going to that fight though. Oh, by the way, salute! Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it, my dude. Uh, people underestimate people's ability till they actually confront them. Then you'll be surprised because you underestimated the person. Uh, I mean, never say never, but you're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, his face is probably going to get busted up too. I wouldn't be surprised. He don't have to even knock him out. He just needs to drop him. If he can outbox him, you know, eight to four, and drop him, that honestly should be enough to give him a decision. But being that he's rushing, it'll probably not be. What are the positives and negatives of the high guard? Man, that's a good question. Um, I, mean, I mean, there really ain't any, there really ain't any negatives. There's really not, man. Uh, I mean, because even from, like, even from the high guard, you just still shoot your da jab straight up, boom, you know, straight. It's you don't even need to drop it, and it's like and do all of it and come back. It's just bang, just bang. The right hand, bang, bang. Even the left hook, boom. Like it's it's all just you no, know, boom. It's so there's really no negatives. Your your defense is completely set up. Um, your whole body from head down to your you know your guard. It, your, your hips and your guard. Uh, it's all covered. Um, you can still roll with shots. You know, you can weave, you know, slip under. You can turn with them. You can still turn and shoot back. There really are no, no negatives, man. There's just not. Uh, it's all the positives. Like, it, it is like there, you know, there's negatives to uh, everything. The, uh, of course, but it, it really depends. Okay, here's how a negative can be. If your arms aren't long enough to cover your whole body, you know, from your, from your head down to the guard, if your arms ain't long enough, like if you have, if the, if it's short here, 
and you're, you know, it only comes down to like halfway through your hips. Well, then they can still dig under it, even though you can turn over. Well, then you're just digging, you know, leaving a wide, a big opening over here. But if your arms, if you have the proper body shape to where you can completely cover up in the high guard, then there are no negatives, you know, because even the uppercut, boom, it's just boom, boom. Like it, it's, as soon as you hit it, it's already back. So even the uppercut is fine. Uh, all every punch can be thrown straight out of the high guard without any extra movement needed. All of them. Um, you can always switch right to a Philly shell, like just with one little movement. You can cross arm just instantly. So there's not really any negatives unless you don't have the body type for it. And some guys, some guys don't have the body tick for it. Um, like, look at every fighter who's ever done well out of the high guard, or, or any fighter who's ever used the high guard. Any you know decent fighter B plus or higher who's used the high guard. Um, well, you're not your your vision. I mean, it could be compromised, but not really because like, as long as you you also have to be able to. Um, always be in position to attack or defend, right? Like, like uh, let's use Virgil Ortiz, for instance, right? Because everyone knows him right now, and he is a guy who's always in position to attack or defend. So he throws the jab. The guy, say, slips it and turns to the side to where maybe he can't see, right? Well, it's just a quick pivot, and now you're right back on him. The second you see him turning, you're already turning with him. And now, boom, you're lined up with him perfectly. Um, if you have, you know, heavy feet and you can't turn as well, it's still it's just a pivot, right? Even a guy with heavy feet can just, you know, just sl slide like the one foot stays planted and you lift that one up, boom, now you're turned over here instantly. Um and you know your 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 vision ain't even all that impaired because you're still looking right at him. So if he throws the left hook, like you know, you could just move it just enough to where now I can see. Like I'm seeing it come around the the hook. So it's not really all that impaired. It's really not. Um, and again, a, a high card. You know, if you're even fighting out of like right here, because Tyson like to you know put the gloves right under his eyeballs, like like this, you know. So you're still seeing everything, right? And then if he needed to, he'd pick them up, but he'd keep them always right here. Like he's always right here. I like to do that when I was younger. Um, I, I keep him the whole way up now. I keep him the whole way up here, but when I was younger, I was just straight like that. Because it's just boom, boom. It's just everything shoots straight out from there. Just right here. And you can see, you know, 360. Uh, yeah, you can turn. Uh, first of all, that's the pivot. If he's trying to go around you, he has to use a lot more footwork than you. So he's going to be using a lot more energy than you, which is all you need is the one foot. Just whoop, boom. You're, now you're pointed right at him. Um, and obviously, uh, you don't want to stay... Like, you don't want to stay in range, in his range, unless you're attacking. So, like, say, like, you know, you throw your jab. If he moves back, just take a step back yourself. There's Unless you want to keep going. Um, but, like, the guy shouldn't even be able to hit that angle on you because the only to, to where – because you have to be really close first for him to hit that angle on you to where he can get you. Otherwise, you should always be out of range. Always. Um, almighty salute for the super chat, my man. Appreciate it. Almighty 377. How you doing, my man? Hope all's well with you. This may be the only negative is the high guard is that your opponent could pull it down low. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Um, but I was just showing how to do that even with a Philly show, you know, even with the Philly show like right here, you know, um, you can hook, you can hook in here, you know, pull it away. And now they're fucked. Like, what do they have? Just their shoulder. Like, they they can't they don't can't cover the other side. So every defense.
can't have a, a, a guard pulled down. One of your hands can be pulled down. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can do it with high guard as well, for sure. Um, I can't really think of too many, like, uh, too many neg negatives that are solely on the high guard. It's it's why it's the 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 punch that or the defense that all fighters should use. I can't stand when I see these guys fighting from like chest level, like right here, right to, to where they punch from here, from from right from there. They're punching from the chest or punching from right here, right, right, right in that that middle zone. Like they should be punching from up here, rather than never, none of this, none none of this, always from from up here. Up here, eh. high guard is a lack of work rate. How so? How so? Too defensively. Not true. I mean, because you can sit there and bang, bang, turn, bang. You know, you can constantly keep punching out of the high guard. I mean, Miguel Cotto does it. He's not a uh, – Virgil Ortiz does it. Um, Golovkin does it. A lot of these guys do it. And even Floyd has done it at times when pressing forward. And they all have um, – high guard ain't too defensively minded. No, nah, man, not at all. Not at all. I can't – I mean – even a guy like Winky Wright, he threw uh, some of his fights had the most punches possible, to, like records set with in his fights. You are defensively minded, but it's not going to stop um, you from throwing any more punches than, say, the next guy. You're still going to be throwing the same amount of punches as the next guy. If you want to be anyway, you can. It's not that you, you know. A guy might use the high guard and not throw that many punches, but it doesn't prohibit you. Because, again, every punch, you can just keep firing right out of it. Like, just keep going, man, like constantly. It's, you're still right, right back to high guard. Like, oh, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> I mean, you can just keep Yo, going. Okay. So, I don't did know. you see that Logan Paul was in WrestleMania? No, I didn't, but I, I heard about it this morning, right? Yeah, that was crazy. He was in that was like you would never think a YouTuber would be in WrestleMania. But did you did you see WrestleMania? No, I forgot all about it, dude. I ended up because my mom got some health issues going on right now. That's why I told people I'd be back on last night. But that's why I couldn't. because oh, I know you're a big wrestling fan. So. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was going to honestly. I was gonna jump back on and stream something like not stream it, but uh, well, yeah, stream it. You know, not share it, but I couldn't. I had to. <laughs> what up, man? That's that's yeah, more important. Back. What's up? What's up? MMA, what up, what up man? Not much, man. Man, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't watch wrestling no more. Man. I can't do it no more. It's too much. It's too scripted now. <laughs> The like guys hit the likes. Ah, and dude, it's I like love wrestling was my first love. Man, out of like, remember when you used like to think that. wrestling was sports? real? Wrestling was my favorite when I was a kid. Well, dude, because it was like, better back then. Remember they had like WCW and yeah. and WF. Like, like and when I there remember WF and NWA. Like when Flair was like the WWE champ uh, for NWA before it became WCW and Hogan. Was the champ for WWF before it became WWE, and like then it went to the Warrior. Um, he lost the title to the Warrior at WrestleMania five or six or something. And then after that, I it was very sporadic. I started watching it, and then I was done. I remember when, like, I was younger. I used to think the WWE was real. I was like, "Damn, this is crazy." But now, like, it's it's totally. Grown men thought it was real back then, dude. They really did. But dude, I mean, I don't watch it now. But like, they had like epic matches back then. Like, remember, like Mankind, Hell in a Cell, Undertaker. Like, dude, that shit was crazy. Yeah, they did. Have but that. and but it's like they they did so many stuff. Like they scripted so many stuff. Like they uh sometimes redo it and they don't even know. Like they redo the same thing. Or, okay. Like they, Here we go. Here we go. Steel, Steel came up with a good way uh, reason high guard um. A negative to high guard. 
Um, it's not all that big of a negative, but I mean, a uh, little bit. The laces from your from the inside your gloves, if they get smashed against your face, they can like scuff you. They can scuff you up, um, and it might look like you got a little more beat up than you were. Uh, and it can What's up, Steel? Scuffs enough, you know, it can make it more more likely to have a cut there, like a cut developed there, because the skin's already. Soft. Yeah, I know still he's a there big virtual fan. That's one. There you go. Dude, but I'm excited, man. From here on out, pretty much like every weekend we got boxing, right? Every I mean, not even pretty much every exactly, exactly. Every big fight. Dude, we literally big fights. Big fights. Yeah, back triple G back next week. Back. We got Stand Triple Spence. G next week. We got, uh, we got Lubin versus Fundora next week. We got Ryan Garcia versus Tagu. And on UFC, we got uh, Aljamain uh, Sterling or whatever versus yeah. uh, uh, Jan. And we got Volkanovski versus uh, the Korean Zombie. <clears throat> and the week after that, we got Spence Ugas. And that's that card and is stacked yeah, with. Taev is on that yeah. card also. Isaac Cruz returning versus uh, Gamboa. Then the next week after that, we got we go to the UK with uh, with Fury and White. That's a good yep. card. Hell then okay. after that, we got Shakur versus Valdez. Valdez. That's yeah. a good Aiden fight. Taylor Serrano. Yeah, same. that's a great fight. Smith, same night. Yeah. Or the next week. The next week. I'm sorry. Next week. Uh, the week after. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. The one with Valdez and Shakur. All of them fight Vargas. Uh, then. You got like Taylor like Vine. a week. Then after <laughs> that, right? A week after that is Canelo versus oh, Bivol. Bivol. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we got Castadio versus Charlie <laughs> too. <laughs> oh, that shit's already after that. Dang. Yep. Mm, yeah. Yep. Six weeks in a row, but and eat no showcase main events. Like you know, normally we're happy just for like a showcase main event. Uh, nah, man, it's 50 50 fight for six weeks in a row or close to 50 50, you know, a fight where either guy can win. All right, I'm sure you guys went over this. I haven't been, I've been busy as fuck. I haven't been able to catch up on the streams. Uh, and, and MMA, what you guys say about uh, Cambosos and Haney? Cambosos and Haney. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people are uh, favoring Haney by decision. But Haney uh, fades in the later rounds, you know, um, his he gets hit way more than, you know, the guy they're comparing to him to, Floyd, you know, and I think yeah, we just he needs to stop game. backing in. When JoJo he just, threw, he could not miss. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that was his last fight, right? Yeah, I think he needs to save. Anywhere from a draw. To barely won versus JoJo. Yeah, I did see that one. I did watch that one in full. Yeah, he barely won. It was he didn't, yeah, he didn't he didn't do much. He didn't do much. Nope. And he kept getting hit with bombs. And like JoJo couldn't miss when he did throw. JoJo could have won that if he would have just threw more and led more. Um, because we just rewatched it a few days ago on Odyssey. Uh but um yeah, man, I don't uh, and, you know, the Haney, just a bigger, better version. The Haney that fought, the Haney that fought Jojo, more active. He's more active too. The he Haney that fought Jojo loses to Cambosis. What's that? The Haney that fought Cambo, the Haney that, that fought Jojo Diaz loses to Cambosis. He, he gets knocked out versus Cambosis. Mm -hmm. He's battered, man. And if Cambosis, because Cambosis stays on you after he hurts you. Right, and if Cambosis hurts Haney like Lenares did, he will keep pounding on Haney, and Haney will probably get knocked out. So he can't, you know. He needs to, he needs so who to, you taking MMA? I didn't hear who you taking. I got Haney decision. You know, I do. And um, uh. I mean, okay. Uh, with the bookies having Haney is like a two to one favorite, which makes no sense to me. But uh, if 
like just by what actually happens in the ring, I expect Cambosos uh, to to win. I don't know if he'll get it though, but I do expect him um, to pull it out. I think Haney will take do pretty good those first three rounds, but after that, every round is going to get worse for him because he fades. He fades every fight in the second half. He just does. Um, you know, even you know, like many guys have pointed this out, even like, you know, mainstream or fighters or whatever, anyone who watches, the guy fades in the second half. Everything, his punch drop, uh, his punch uh, count drops, his speed plummets, he, you know, he, he starts getting put against the ropes. I mean, he starts to get walked down. Like, every he fades bad from, you know, six on. So six on, that's going to be mostly Cambosos' rounds. I would think one through six. All one, all Cambosos has to do in one through six. Two of those rounds. Two of those rounds, he should be able to do enough in the second half uh, to win the fight. If he can win more than two, then he should be up to go. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking of is, and I get Devin Haney don't have much power, but is Cambosos going to be too eager to, you know, is he going to think T.O. doesn't have, or is he going to think uh, Haney doesn't have any power and he, he don't have to respect his power? And is he going to, is the, his hometown crowd going to make him too eager and too aggressive? And if he goes in there trying to do too much, he may run into a big shot early. Like, Haney might not be able to hurt him later, but early, you know, jumping into a shot, you know, and Haney throwing it forward, that that impact enough, maybe even enough to drop him, you know, like a flash knockdown, and that would hurt him bad on the cards. So he has to, he has to stay aggressive, but also defensively sound. Don't get too ca- uh, caught up in, you know, the the crowd. And try to like get him out of there or something early. Just take your time, break the guy down, really attack the body. Yeah, he should be able to win. You know. so Did you watch the press conference? Of course. So they had uh, the first little one. Uh, they weren't like face to face. They did it over uh, like telecommunications, telemonitor thing. Yeah, I watched it. Okay, okay. Oh, were you asking me if I saw it? Yeah, I was asking you if you saw oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. The, I, like, I give Haney props for taking it, signing, whatever, but I know for a fact he wouldn't have the same energy with, like, Loma or even Tio. I don't think he would step up and fight Tio, even though I'm not big on Tio. He had the opportunity to fight, a lo- fight Loma. His own father admitted they turned it down and went the interim out. No, yeah, I know that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, But even at this point, he still wouldn't have the same energy. Yeah, and, and I don't even give a guy props for taking a fight that you really can't turn down. Like you, that shit. That should just be the standard across the board. If he wins, gets props for that. Taking the fight and eh. winning, that's where you get the props. Real quick, Herrera, salute for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, my man's expecting a knockout of Canel. Really? Damn. And when Usyk fights AJ, I expect AJ to go down multiple times and quit like he did versus Ruiz. Um, I think that's a little more likely than Canelo getting knocked out. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if Canelo got dropped. But to knock knocking him out, that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm really interested to see Triple G next week. You called it. Yo, and look at that title I put in the private chat. <laughs> this is the title I was talking about. I thought Group 47 was Lords of Trenton. Lords of- wow, Devin Haney goes ape shit monkeying around. Wow. Can't believe I did that, man. That's wild. <laughs> yes. They knew what they were doing, man. Exactly, bro. The first comment is first comment they're shitting on that. It's like you know what you did with you when you put that title. <laughs> Man, the monkeying ape shit and monkeying around both, both you didn't even mention the ape shit one going ape shit and monkeying around. What? 
I'm yeah. like, come on, bro. Oh, and the, <laughs> Whoever. Yeah, I, I'm not even showing it. It's ridiculous. But the the one yeah. thing I noticed watching that Jojo Diaz fight with Haney is, um, and, you know, the, all the Haney stuff I watched since just you know, solidified it. But he's not fleet footed like people think. He's really very similar stylistically to Tiafimo. He just doesn't have the power. Um, and so he throws more than Tio, you know, in general. Uh, but he's flat footed and just fights right from here. Like, pops the jab from here, throws the open, but he's very flat footed. I like normally a light punching out boxer, you would think he'd be like kind of up on the balls of his feet so he can jump back and jump forward. But he's really, really sits, he does sit down on his feet. Like he's flat footed, he walks around that ring. Um, so it's, I mean, Haney's going to be getting swarmed by Cambosos. Cambosos ain't going to have a hard time getting in on him. He's just not. All you got to do is keep your guard up, uh, and shoot behind a jab, shoot a jab and boom, you're in. Maybe not the very first time, but just keep doing it. You'll push him right against the ropes. Um, especially when he slows down, but man, go back and watch any of his fights. He's not, he's not. You know, uh, a fleet-footed guy, or like up on his toes, like like a Pauli Malignaggi or um, a, a Devin Alexander or something. Not at all. You know, Floyd could do it, um, but that's Floyd. Like no one should be comparing Haney to Floyd at all anymore. That just needs to stop. And Haney gets it way too much to be. Way too much, way too clean to be comparing them to Floyd Mayweather. I think he compares himself. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, all these young dudes want to be like all these young Americans, especially you know, want to be the next Floyd. Which you know, I'm tired of that, man. You just be the be you, be yourself. Can you imagine? Yeah. Like, like, look, we, there was guys like, Mah- like Sugar Ray Robinson. Everyone deemed him best pound for pound for pound, you know, best ever, or a Hank Armstrong in that era. The following 10 years, there wasn't like every young fighter was talking about their following their blueprint and wanting to be like them. Or then after like Ali and Sugar Ray Robinson or Sugar Ray Leonard, obviously, though, they come one like immediately after the other, but. Not all the young guys were talking about, I'm going to be like Ali or I'm going to be like, uh, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard. Obviously, Muhammad Ali himself wanted to be uh, like, and he patterned his style after Ray Robinson. And Sugar Ray Leonard patterned his style off of like Ali, but that's one guy, you know, and they, they still were their own men. They still, they were, like, uh, you never saw Ali in multiple press conferences bring up like he's the next Ray Robinson or something like that or uh, Leonard, I'm the next Ali. It didn't happen. I don't know what the fuck is going on with these guys nowadays, man. Where they 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 wish they were Floyd. Like they're they're professional fighters and world champions, and they still wish they were another man. It's like, dude, grow up. Dude, it's because they it was what they want is is the money. They're just they were, I mean, and you know Floyd is partly to blame for that. I mean, let's be honest. Every I don't know if he's done it lately, but before like, if Pacquiao had a good fight, here comes Floyd with a post of like a hundred thousand dollars on a laid out on a table or some shit. Like it's just uh-huh. stupid shit. You no know? one. It's like he has more money than that, and these idiots get impressed by that, and it's like. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. You know, like, I guess Haney shouldn't be given props to for taking a fight. But in this day and age, shit, that's surprising as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you never saw dudes like after Joe Lewis, you know, who was basically like the best pound for pound fighter the world had ever seen at that point because he was like so fundamentally sound and whatnot and really advanced the sweet science. You didn't see all these like dudes start being like, I want to be like the next Joe Lewis. And it's like, no, what the hell is going on nowadays where people are doing this stuff? It never happened before, ever. Like, like your Mike Tyson or Oscar De La Hoya, any of these guys who made 
tons of money themselves. You didn't hear that. They weren't doing that shit. I mean, it's partly, I think, the media. I mean, because even then, like, even, you know, with basketball, like, dude, everybody's compared to Jordan. Jordan's been retired for, what, almost 20 years? (laughs) Yeah, but I don't know. But do the players themselves compare themselves to Jordan? Well, I think well, I think with like the media hype, and then like it's all talked about, so it's like then I think maybe they do, you know, or I don't know, I'm not sure. I think it's just dude, it's propaganda. Even like every time a Tank Davis fight comes on, if you're on social media, you see the Showtime fucking propaganda. They call him a great one. They say like he's the yeah. world champion, and I got you know people at my job who are young social media bots that don't know shit about anything <laughs> have told me literally like, Hey, is it take Davis? Great. I'm like, fuck no. You know, yeah. like are you out of your mind? He lost no. a cruise. <laughs> Dude, they watch fucking Jake Paul. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I got stuck. Like I didn't get stuck. I wasn't doing shit. One of them guys asked me for a link. I watched it. That was the worst thing I ever seen. I'm like, I'm never watching that dude again. <laughs> like, I mean, how many next Floyds are there? Like, I mean, you got Shakur Stevenson, you got Devin Haney, um, like Terrence Crawford for one. He doesn't say he wants to be the next Floyd. Uh, at least I give him credit for that. He's like he's his own guy. Like, he's his own man. Um, but you hear too many of these guys talking that shit. Like even Tank, Tank, another one. He used to. He's not doing it so much now. Um. I think Spence used to do it too, a little bit. Maybe. I mean, you, you had some of the smaller guys doing it, like Broner. Uh, Gary Russell was talking that shit before. Uh, it's I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe they do it to like try and steal um, Floyd's old fans and whatnot, or his old uh, the guy people who didn't like Floyd into the like um, the next guy. So hate on me now or something. Well, and then plus it grabs a headline. Like if you're, you know, if you don't know shit and then you see Devin Haney supposedly being compared to Floyd, then you're like, oh, wait, someone who doesn't know shit would be like, let me take a look at this guy or something. That's you know? a good point, too. Maybe that's why they're doing it. Like it's kind of promotion, you know, uh, to get people to watch your fights. Oh, this is the next Floyd? Shit, really? You know, people who really only paid attention to Floyd, they'll now tune into your fight. And that's a lot of people. But it's like the funny, the funniest part of all is the fact that Money Mayweather came from Pretty Boy Floyd and Pretty Boy Floyd understood, like, I got to fucking take a backseat to all these guys to catapult myself to superstardom. And that's what these young fighters don't understand. And Floyd even tells them this. Floyd himself tells them this, and they don't fucking listen. Like Haney in the press conference, oh, I'm worth more than I, what I took. You ain't worth shit. What the fuck are you worth? Dude, he basically got three million. Dude, fucking. Uh, three million? Yeah, dude. Like, he ain't worth shit. What has he done to be worth anything? Exactly. Exactly. Remember when, I remember when champions, world champions, would be getting like a hundred thousand, and they'd fight Godzilla, you know, for the hundred grand, and they'd be like, "I'm gonna win too." They like, not that that was like great, but sadly, when they were making lesser money, we got all the fights we wanted. You know, whenever they'll make three million to fight a JoJo Diaz, then it's it's like pulling teeth. To get him to fight Cambosos for three million, you know. Well, dude, Angel Garcia said it himself one time. I forgot who the fuck they were fighting. He's like, "Why are we gonna risk whatever when we're getting paid a million to fight?" I forgot what bum they were fighting. I what bum? That too. No. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, Angel Garcia was like talking about his son. He's like, "Why would we risk anything when we're getting a million dollars to fight fucking nobodies?" Yeah, it might have been like a, a Spencer or something or. A- Thurman or something, or it was around that time. Yeah, he was like, "Why would we take, you know, uh, you know, three million to fight so and so when we can go fight two like bums and make the same money? We're guaranteed to win both of them fights. And this is a 50 50 fight for us, you know? Yeah, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. I don't know. I don't understand how all this money got like 
injected into the sport. I don't know where it's coming from. Like, I get it with PBC because PBC, it's, it's, well, I guess I do get it because PBC just got that huge Waddell and Reed money and we're overpaying everybody. But everyone else, you know, still had to take what they were worth. Then the zone eventually comes out. And does the same thing. They start overpaying. Got a guy like Devin Haney, for instance, got that caught. You know, caught the wave right at the right, right at the right, per, the perfect time as the zone's coming out. He's projected to be like the next Floyd, and boom, he gets a giant contract with the zone. No, Doctor Shadow. Um, so hopefully, once that all dies down. We go back to normal. You know, hopefully when that dies down, we go back to normal. Uh, did Dr. Shadow Films, did you watch the Showtime Spencer Who Goss Countdown? No, I haven't. Did you, Ragnarok? No, I haven't watched any of that. Is it on YouTube? That's what I was just about to ask. Is it on YouTube? It usually is. Yeah, they usually do put them on there. I have Showtime. I can watch it if it's not, but I'm just curious. I no, I don't, I don't have Showtime at all. I no, yeah, they're usually on YouTube anyways, but yeah, I'll look for it later. I bought this new TV, not too, when I bought this new computer when I broke my old one just to watch like boxing matches and like this, you know, on this great TV, haven't watched a single boxing match on it. I bought it for nothing because I don't watch TV. But I'm thinking, yeah, he said it's on YouTube, but I'm like, hey, you know, I'll be able to watch, you know, fights in like this great quality, but haven't watched one. What kind of TV, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a Sony, maybe. Uh, it's I don't know. It's like one of these. Um, but it's like really good in contrast, so no colors like bleed uh, into the like you can see like the act high sense. It is. It's a high sense. It's a um. It's like well, a, they're decent monitors. Maybe I don't know. It's it's a new brand. I guess they they're they're trying to. Like the, oh, this is why I got it right. The I was going for a Sony, I think, and I forget what company this is under. It might be under Sony, but they're trying to get. Um, they're real big in like Asia. This company for TVs, uh, and because they're trying to make a push into the American market, and you know, name cachet, no one knows of it, so they think it's like cheap, so they're not buying them. So they had them like lower price, and the guy. He was like, you know, showing all the um, he pulled up like some independent website that like lists all what they're good at. And this shit crushed the other one. And he was like, yeah, man, he's like, I'm serious. Like, don't be afraid to buy it. I, if I was buying one, I'd buy this one as, as well. And you can see it here. Uh, and man, is it good. Dude, you can see the fucking veins, like red veins in people's eyes. It's it's a trip. It, at first, it was a little weird. Like watching it, it just didn't. It looked um. I don't know. It just looked like too clean. It didn't look like film. It all like I was describing it to someone. Like it looked like I was staring through like a window in the outside and watching <laughs> go on out there. But as I kept like watching shit throughout that day, that that faded. Now it's just like normal. But yeah. I forget who High Sense is under, but I'm I'm not big into that stuff. But yeah, it's fucking dope, the best TV I ever own. Uh, I normally don't spend like money like that on TVs because I don't hardly use them. But finally, I was like, man, I, I want to watch some boxing matches on something really good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it almost has like a fake look to it. Yeah, it does, man. And it's it was like really weird, man. I almost bought an LG. It was uh, I was. It was something like liquid something, um, but it uh, it was like it was way too much money. Was, uh, yeah, I don't watch TV either. Man, it was in good quality. It was way too expensive. Yeah, I don't watch fucking TV either. But I mean, you know, there's hardly ever a good movie out. I I got my sister's Amazon Prime password while she was here this week i watched that fucking last narc finally screen size i forget what it is man i forget i don't even again i'm not big at that uh i mean it's big i don't know what size though 
them liquid liquid things. Yeah, it was. It looked so good though. And then I was like, "Oh, I want this one." And he told me the price. I was like, "Yeah, get the fuck out of here." Yeah, I got lucky. My girl works at an electronic store, so I got a Samsung, pretty decent price. <clears throat> That's how I got my PS5 too. She got it for me. <laughs> well, I paid for it, but she helped me get it. <laughs> Okay. Was she uh paid for it first, and then you just paid her back? Um, did she? Yeah, I think so. I think she put it on her credit card, credit card or something. Herrera, um, again, salute, yo, Aunt. You think Marshall can beat Shields? Who's this Marshall? I I don't even know who these chicks are. I'd have to I'd have to look her up and watch her, man. Um, I don't know. Let's pull it up. What's her name? Yeah, man, I'm super excited for all these fights, man. I was like, just thinking about it like two days ago. I'm like, damn, we're getting this fight, and then this fight, and then this fight. I'm like, shit. I have a theory behind that. Um, look, being that these guys weren't getting fights, you know, uh, for the last couple of years, and ever since you know the, the COVID, <clears throat> and they're you know basically scheduled are contracted to either get so many fights a year or a certain amount of money per year, right? And they weren't getting it for a couple of years. So now I think all of these promoters, or they're all in the same boat because none of them could put on fights. I think now the only way they can live up to their contracts or, or they'll end up getting sued by the fighters is to start making big fights. That's why you have like people working together, if they can't get a big in-house fight, you have just like all big fights being made. And I think that's because the promoters have to do that in order to, you know, uh, live up to their contracts that they have with their fighters and get them the money that they promised them they would. It makes perfect sense. You know, like uh, if for whatever reason, um, like a promoter, uh, isn't able to get a guy a certain amount of fights a year and he's not injured or something, he, he almost always has to get him in a big fight. And I think that's why we're getting all these big fights. And I think we're going, I don't think this is going to just be like a six month thing. I think it's going to happen basically all year, all year. Cause all these guys are going to get two big fights at least this year. Like watch, you'll end up saying it. It's going to be awesome. And uh, like Golovkin and Arata, for example, he made like not him because he has like that set fight with the zone, and this fucking fight is worth so much. Money. I I lost my mind on like, uh, if the fight took place on um New Year's Eve over there, it was a hundred twenty eight million dollar fight just for the fighters' persons. The fighters' persons are one hundred twenty eight million. So I don't know. Bloody Elbow wrote, wrote up a whole story on it, like the just crazy money that's over there in Japan for these like higher weight class fights. <laughs> So I don't know what kind of purse they're going to, they're splitting uh, being that it's, you know, in April, but I don't think it would have been uh, cut back too much. You know, it's probably still like a 40, $50 million fight. I mean, it's probably going to be a second highest payday outside of Canelo ever. Well, it will be. It may be even, you know, generally it might be bigger. Just because, you know, Japan, everything's going to be pricey over there for this stuff, too. Well, going back to what you were saying about your theory, I, I believe you're right. But I think that and then that's and that's the um, the basis in which Canelo ended up suing the zone and pretty much just getting out of that shit because he just said, like, hey, you guys aren't delivering my fights. But obviously there was the whole pandemic thing. Oh, wait, I know who Savannah Marshall is. Wait, is Shields fighting this chick? I know who Savannah Marshall is. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize her name. As soon as I just saw her, I know who she is. She can fucking fight. Oh. This, this chick is with Peter Fury. Okay, wait, is this fight signed? Is this fight on? Who asked me that question? Uh, Herrera. Herrera, is this fight on? Yes, I think she can beat her. Yes, I do. Dude, she's fucking good. She's actually the best woman boxer I've ever seen. Straight up. Best. And she beat Shields in the amateurs. I think twice, actually. 
and Shields has never beat her. Okay, it is signed. Oh, dude. Hell yeah, she can beat her, man. She's already beaten her. Um, yeah, Funkrate says Marshall's going to do this chick. I've never seen a, a female boxer have such coordination. Um, not like, you know, you'll see a chick uh, boxer look good on the bags, but then when she steps in to the ring, all of a sudden she fights like a girl. This chick fights like a man at all times. Um, no, she, this chick is a beast, bro. She's the best fighter I've ever, a female fighter I've ever seen, hands down. Yes, yeah, she's lost in the amateurs herself, but not to Shields, right? Shields has never beaten her, correct? Yeah, okay. So, th yeah, man. Wow. When's the, when's the fight? What date is that? That'll be an interesting fight. Okay, here, I'll show this chick. Dude, she's a beast, man. Wow. Trying to hold Miss Air as she comes in. Yeah, hold on, let me slow this down just so you can. I'll just slow it to 75 just so it uh, doesn't freeze up. Bro, stop. Let me check her out. Just hit that. Bang. Bang. Turn. Oh, ho, 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 man. Watch this shit. Rolls with that. She comes over to the left. With the left, and she's long. Drives the uppercut. Pivots on her. And bangs her with a jab. Runs her right into a jab. Steps right back. Got her gloves up. Pivots. Leans and then pivots. Oh, she tried, kind of tried the head butter there. Boom. Boom. Two, two, the punch connection is crazy, too. Uh, she, she's like full-blown another man. You know, really still just fighting like some girly girls, but uh, this chick's manly as hell. Body shot. No, yeah. I'm I'm like this yeah, she's the best chick I ever saw. Um female boxer. And she's got length, footwork, defense, power of her own. So and look, yo, remember in the presser that they whatever fight that was, uh it was what that was Savannah's last fight, last time Savannah fought, right? Her and or was the last time Shields fought. Savannah was there, and they got into that little face off outside the ring. And dude, Shield like was trying to stay calm because remember, she was acting out, and now she's like, she's trying, she's like reeled herself in. She went crazy again. You could tell that this chick is in her head, you could tell this chick is in her head, and She's a little scared of her. She's a little scared that this is going to be the fight she lost. Yeah, this Marshall was absolutely built like a man. She's a woman. I mean, no doubt about it. That's but that's why she poses such a threat to Shields. Can't help but be a weight bully. She's five eleven. Not too many females that tall willing to take a punch. I mean, yeah, and she's huge. Yeah, she's tall. She's long. She's basically my dimensions, my height, my dimensions, and moves like a dude. Watch her knockout from yesterday. Who? Savannah Marshalls? Savannah Marshall fought yesterday and I missed it. Oh, man. I, I kept hearing this name, but I wasn't thinking that that was her. Who, who was it verse? Yeah, here's her fight with Shields. Clarissa. She <laughs> her hand is being raised in the amateur. She whooped her, and then it goes, Clarissa Shields destroys Savannah Marshall. Period. <laughs> really? Well, she couldn't do it before. Who fought yesterday? What And what was the chick's name? Check box rack. Okay. I thought there was no fights yesterday. 
Uh, well, uh, Friday night. I, probably it was Friday night. There were uh, um, shit. Who fought Saturday night? No one, made, no one special. The fight sucked too. I heard. Silent assassin. All right. All right. Femke Hermans, 13 and 2 or something. Femke Hermans. All right. What was it? Brutal? KO. All right. Here we go. I got it. Wait, terrible angle. Was it on the zone? I don't know. Oh, oh. okay. Here we go. Oh, okay, here we go. She rolls up. <clears throat> Tricks her. She don't know where it's coming. Throws out a jab. She ducks the right, <laughs> comes back with a left hook, boom, and crumpled her. Boom. I'm telling you, Clarissa Shields is sweating this chick, man. Sweating her. I remember when we watched the last time she fought and Savannah was there. I'll never forget that. Yeah, I forgot about it, but I so I guess I would forget it. But if I get reminded, <laughs> I'll remember it. Clarissa was bugging. You could tell that this Savannah chick was all up in her head, man. Marshall looks like a chick that can knock dudes out. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Look, this is a fight that uh, if, if she holds the bench, she actually gets a lot of credit for vice versa, but you know, this is this will be a respectable field in the pro rank. The only one other one I give her uh you know respect for is that that other chick she fought the hammer, Christian Hammer. But even her shields, she didn't really know how to fight. I'll give Shields a lot of credit. I will consider Shields the greatest uh, woman's fighter uh, of all time if she beats Marshall, because to me, Marshall, on a pound for pound skill set basis, and the way she actually boxes, I've never seen a female box like that. She has more talent than any female boxer I've ever seen. So if Shields beats her, Christina Hammer, not Chris, okay, Christina Hammer, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. So if Shields beats her, then to me, that would, that I, that I will call her the greatest female fighter ever. The quote. She got to do it first, though, man. Over and Wolf. Um, look, uh, I'm not saying the toughest, like, no, because I mean, to me, no woman, no person. But I, look, I don't, I don't know. Fuck that. No, no. And Wolf ain't no woman, as far as I'm concerned. Like again, that's that's a different breed, man. And Wolf, uh, serious. I know. And Wolf would crush shields, but. You know, it is what it is. I think even um, Layla Ali would have crushed Shields. Um, so let me take that back. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't call her the Gwolf, but she'll be one of the top five for sure. Yeah, and Wolf would destroy her. Layla Ali, Prime on Layla would have destroyed her. But they're also bigger than her, too. They're also a lot bigger. 
Shields is good, but she doesn't hit as hard as Marshall, and that's a big difference. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but, boy, this will let us know, does Marshall take a punch as good as she gives a punch? Yeah, Lucia Riker was also a savage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll say, you know, Shields is one of the greats. Because to me, she hasn't done anything, you know? She hasn't done anything just yet to signify that she deserves that status. Layla Ali had a great jab and used her height. Yeah, yeah. But she was one of the hardest to beat. Um, yeah, the you know, the, the air is thin at the top when it comes to these women just because there ain't men of, many of them. There's like five. Shields is 5'8", Wolf is 5'9", Ali 5'10". Yeah, I guess that ain't much of a difference, huh? I guess it ain't. Man, Layla looked Layla looked so much bigger than Shields. And this chick is 5'11, Marshall. And long. Marshall went to distance twice early in her career, been knockouts ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you need uh, you need a little experience before you start getting super confident as a pro. She probably wasn't all that confident in, in terms of, like, the pro game yet. And they're probably, what, four-rounders or something? Yeah, yeah, right? Ali looked so much bigger than Shields. How, how can it only be two inches? That's a little crazy. But I believe you. I'm just saying. Out of all the fights to be made, which one you want to see the most, and whether it's this year, or next year, whoever. For me, it's it's Crawford versus Spence. Just by the way. Yeah. Um. I. I'm. Not, I. I have to wait and see how how good Spence looks versus Ugas before I say that. Um. I won it like three, four years ago. That, that fight was everything, but right now. Uh. Um. I mean, it's man. If you could, if you could do it right now, and it would happen, which fight would you would you make? Okay, if Bivol, if Canelo can get past Bivol, I'd want to see Canelo versus Better Biev. Uh, if if Fury can get past White and Usyk can get past AJ. Fury and Usyk, I would like to see. Um, yeah, I was asked this question before. Um, yeah, I'm sure you were. I just probably wasn't listening. Uh, there's not. Even then, I couldn't really come to like a conclusion. No one fight really stands out to me. <laughs> Prime boxing, Virgil and Boots. Honestly. No, I'm not even kidding. Uh, no, not Virgil and Boots, but Virgil and Crawford. That is the one. Yeah, yeah. Virgil versus Crawford. That is the one. I I didn't even think about that one, but that that would be the one I'd want to see. Virgil and Crawford. Yes. Yep, yep. Martin Duck Rector for a million dollar purse. Oh, man. I mean, Christina Martin was never shit, though, dude. She fought a bunch of prostitutes and just bombs. But yeah, I mean, what the fuck is Crawford going to do? Just wait for somebody to give him a fight? <laughs> what's that? I said, at this point, what's Crawford going to do? Just wait for somebody to hand him a contract? I mean, I don't know, man. He could have already had the Virgil Ortiz fight. I mean, you know, that that would have been a huge fight for him. I get it. It's not like a title fight, but you, you know, look at Floyd when he fought um, you know, Canelo, like, no one was, like, really all uh, clamoring for that fight until like, they brought it up. Then people started talking about it. Um, and Floyd took it. Granted, he might have, you know, brought him down a couple pounds or whatever, but he still took it. Like, and that fight did wonders in the pay-per-view market. That was, I think, his biggest fight. 
apart from like De La Hoya and Pacquiao. Um, it would be similar to that, maybe not to that level, obviously, but similar for offer. I mean, we're looking for a big fight. This guy sells out like little arenas already, not stadiums or anything, but little arenas. Um, Ortiz, he already sells more than you. He's going to give you the lion's share, clearly, to Crawford. He is basically your Mando as it is already. You, you ever going to fight this guy? I mean, yeah, that, that's the one I would want. Yeah. Uh, I would. If. Yeah, I'd even rather see this crazy because it ain't for a dispute or nothing. But if. Spence looks good this fight. I'd even rather see Virgil and Spence than Crawford and Spence. Uh, oh, I'm not making excuses for Canelo, obviously, but I always had a theory, even back then, with the whole what that happened with the you know the catch weight and everything. I always thought it was always Schaefer, just trying to you know, trying to make, my yeah, pretty, pretty much trying to. Make the the Heyman side do good because obviously afterwards, you know he was oh, instrumental. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Because he was he was instrumental in the fact that he knew they couldn't bring Crawford with them. So why are you gonna fuck up our ah uh, yeah? Why are you gonna fuck up Floyd like the guy who we're gonna use as like our rock, our linchpin of our next our new stable that we're gonna leave with? And Schaefer was pretty much running Golden Boy at the time. Fucking yeah. Oscar wasn't nowhere around. Yeah, he was running it. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't he the CEO, right? He was the CEO, right? Of Golden Boy. He Shaker was everything. He was everything, you know. Uh he and Heyman had him in his all the business. That's how that's how he was able to do what he did to steal all the fighters with contracts because Oscar didn't pay attention to anything. He gave blind trust to Schaefer. I mean, in business, you can't really do that, man. You can't. The business is business. I don't care how much. Like, you might have brought this guy into the sport, but this is the sport of boxing. And, and, and Oscar should have known that better than anybody. Like, every manager and promoter has been fucked over ten times by different guys. At least ten times. So, like, you're going to give blind trust to some guy? No, you just – he's looking at it like, well, you brought me into the business, and now – you showed me how it's done, so it's time for me to blossom. I'm going above you, man. I'm taking your stable. Yeah, it's crazy to think that like every PBC fighter could have should have been under the Golden Boy banner. That's crazy. Well, not everyone, most a lot of them though. Yeah, he, he took virtually everybody, dude. He took everybody but Canelo and Leo Santa Cruz, as far as I remember. And Leo Santa Cruz ended up. Uh, going to PBC, yeah, because he had an advisor's contract with Heyman, and every time De La Hoya would get him a fight, Heyman would just shut it down because he had say over who uh, he had say over if you could fight a guy or you couldn't. So then he he like he every time Santa Cruz would get a fight, Al, Al Heyman would just say, "Nope, you can't do it." After that happened three times, he just went to Oscar and was like, "Look, dude, ah." Uh, you did bring me into this game. You built me up. I appreciate everything you did, but I think we both see that I can't stay here. And then even he went to PBC. Yep. And then De La Hoya had to start from scratch, building all his, his whole stable up. He did get the $50 million from Schaefer when he sued them. Uh, when he sued Schaefer, he got that $50 million and that he used to buy a whole bunch of fighters after that, which which really helped him. If he didn't get that money, he probably wouldn't. Uh, he probably would have had to go out of business. Uh, Spurger King, salute uh, for the super chat. He says money. Yeah, I mean money. Like, dude, you money, dude. It's just Oscar De La Hoya again. He fucked over people. He's been fucked over before. He watched his own managers get fucked over. He's watched, you know. Promoters and managers fuck over other managers. Like that's the business. It's it sadly is, but there's no friends in boxing, man. There just ain't. Not on the business end. Not at all. Yeah, Richard Schaefer is a slimy looking dude. Man. He is a slime ball. Um, 
isn't he working with somebody now, like Pro Bellum or some shit? Isn't like Debella and Schaefer working with Pro Bellum now, if I'm not mistaken? Or or I thought didn't he like start up his own promotional company or something? Maybe. I, I I I I heard he's back doing something. I just saw him even sitting ringside at some some recently. Uh, Because we all know Heyman needs a front promotional company to stage his fights. Uh, it's, I wouldn't even say Oscar didn't have Heyman's business sense. Um, he he was pretty good at it, honestly. Uh, and he was good at surrounding himself with the right people. Um, but when you spend all your time locked up in hotel rooms, doing coke or on vacation, just never in the office, you get screwed. Because all they were doing is they didn't have, he didn't have exclusive, like Schaefer, once everybody's exclusive uh, promotional contracts with Golden Boy ran up, he never renewed them. And then he got signed everybody to Heyman, put everybody on Heyman's contracts, and had Golden Boy didn't have any of them under promotional contracts anymore, but they would promote them on a fight by fight basis. So whenever they wanted, they could just walk away. And so Actually, that, even Floyd fights were being promoted by Golden Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Fight by fight basis. So like all Oscar had to do once, just once was walk into the office and see who he had under exclusive promotional co contract. Just had to do it once. And he didn't. And this is, I'm not talking once in like a week. I mean, he had like two years to do this and he never did it. Like, so, dude, I, I mean. And as a business owner, who doesn't fucking do that? <laughs> <laughs> at least look at what contracts you're paying. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Look, it's again, you don't have to do it maybe every week, but maybe every few months go take a fucking glance, dude. Like, and if you're not doing it that long, then why shouldn't they take the business from you? Like, honestly, like I'm not saying what they did was right, but if they're running the whole business, well, then shouldn't they get all the profits? Like, why would they be splitting? Why would they be giving 70% of the profits to you when you're doing nothing? Oh, because it's your name, Golden Boy. It's your name. Like, you're not doing shit, man. So, like, if I'm doing all the work, I, I'm going to feel like, you know what? Fuck this guy, dude. Fuck this. Fuck this is my company. I've been running it for years now. It's mine. It is what it is. We should watch it better be a Vosnik again. What, like on a, a Odyssey or something? What do you mean? Like, watch together? What? Who was better, Victor Ortiz or Adrian Broner? Broner. Broner, for sure. Rona actually had skills. He, he just he didn't have the discipline, um, and he, he had heart. I mean, look at him. You know, in the Maidana fight, he had fucking heart. He just you know didn't have the discipline, and uh, obviously, you know, it's not like uh, him losing to Maidana isn't anything to be like shamed about. Because look at he the right after that, look at all the you know, he fucking beat he basically beat Floyd right after that. So no, he was a damn good fighter, hard fighter to beat. And he retired after the Floyd fight, so we didn't get to see him anymore. Yeah, yeah, sadly. Dude, that's why I'll be telling you, like, I got these fucking uh, bots in my job. They're just social media bots, like they don't even watch shit. This mother motherfucker always tries to bring up Floyd's fifty and oh. And I don't know, he sent me some shit today on Instagram. I just sent him the link to Floyd versus Maidana 1. I'm like, actually watch a fucking fight and tell me Floyd wins this. Yeah, yeah. Like, watch this and tell me how good he is. <laughs> is he really 50-0? and 0? Is he really? And who did 50-0 come against? Fucking Conor McGregor? Be for real. Yeah, Berto. Yeah. Be for fucking scrubs. real. Fucking scrubs. Yeah, well, after that, you know, before from Maidana and before Broner was decent. After that, he kind of fell apart and went downhill. 
he so he did fight scared and had terrible output and all that afterwards. But again, he didn't have discipline. If the guy was like in shape year round, like his hero Floyd, and really trained hard, he would have had a higher output. And you know, he had skills. He just you know didn't have the uh, work ethic, the discipline. What can be done to get Heyman out of boxing? I mean, nothing, nothing. Um, sign promoters sign up the best fighters out there before he does. But again, it's I, I, he's kind of already on his way out. Um, but the one the one good thing with the position he is in now is he's not able to give us many shitty fights anymore. You know, uh, most I would say, if not. The majority, it's close to 50. Like, half of the fights are really good ones. Um, the main events, at least, you know. But he's absolutely had to step up ever since Fox was basically, you know, done with their contract and told him, you know, we're not buying garbage anymore. Showtime told him we're not buying garbage anymore, which is the reason why all of a sudden you're seeing so many fights on pay-per-view. Like, Showtime pay-per-view. Because... Uh, let's for for instance, like he he doesn't have the money to pay these guys anymore, so they all have to really take pay cuts to what they've been used to. Like Thurman Barrios, they could take, you know, like a two and a half mil guarantee or something, and go on Showtime, or like a one and a half mil guarantee, and the rest is up to them. They get a you know pay per view percentage as well, and all these guys are just choosing the pay-per-view percentage. So it sucks that the good fights are on pay-per-view, but just stream them. Fuck it. Stream them. Who cares? Either way, we're getting better fights from Al because he has to. Yeah, you can see PB, uh, PBC fighters have been told to step it up. Yeah, they've been told by Fox, by Showtime, anybody Al works with, like any network he's working with, they they got to take tougher fights now. Well, uh, Disney, ESPN, Showtime, DAZN, and all that, you know, uh, being their own entities are more of a problem than in boxing than promoters, in your opinion. Well, who did that, though? You know? Like, who are the promoters signing these exclusive um, deals with networks? Who who did that, though? That's promoters. Promoters did that. But, so, you know, it's like, who came first to, to fucking, who, what hatched first, chicken or the egg? Or who came first, chicken or the egg? Um, it does suck. The, uh, but, look, you know, as a fight, like, Props to Devin Haney for this, right? And props to Bill Haney and Devin for this, right? The uh, zone is its own platform, but Devin and Bill put this in their contracts specifically to make sure they weren't only allowed on the zone. They they were like, well, look, we'll sign a contract with you guys. Like we would love to do to do business with you, but if a big fight comes, some with uh, a guy on Showtime, we want to be able to fight on Showtime as well. So you don't have to sign an exclusivity contract, like an exclusivity deal with uh, any of these platforms. Uh, you don't have to. So it's it's as much, it's, it's not the platform's fault. It's just not. It's the fighters and the promotions, the promoters, because maybe the promoters aren't making them aware of it, even with the managers, because you can do like, hey, I'm, I'm a DAZN fighter, but if I got to go to ESPN to fight Loma, I'm allowed. If I got to go to you know, wherever, you know, Showtime to fight somebody, I fight Tank, I'm allowed, and boom, it's over. So there's not really like the problem doesn't have to exist. It's it's the it's, it's the fighters and the managers not knowing that, and hopefully future guys do that now that they've seen Devin Haney do it, and 
You know, but if it's the promoters, the promoter should be telling them this. Like, no, you don't have to sign like exclusivity deals with a platform. So, yeah. Um, I wouldn't blame the platforms as much uh, because, you know, these guys don't have to sign exclusivity deals. If you just look at the gigantic deal DAZN gave Haney, and they still gave him the ability to go fight anywhere else he wants to. They, they can't stop him. If he don't, if he wants to go to ESPN to fight someone, he can do it. But when he fights on DAZN, they have a contract with him. He doesn't have to fight on DAZN. Which and yeah. should be done. Like, yo, okay, look, I got a contract with you. Like, you're my main platform. Um, if I'm just fighting, like, an opponent guy, you're my guy. If I can get a big-name fighter, well, I'll I'll try to bring it to zone. I'll give you – I'll let you – I'll bring it to zone. But if I have to go to ES, ESPN, I'm going there. If I have to go to Showtime, I can go there. And then that's all. That easy, man. All these guys need to do that, though. All the fight, all, all the fighters need to start doing that, and then there'd be no problems. We cross promote, you know, bring different guys to different networks with ease. And yeah, I agree with you. Like now, PBC is kind of forced to put on better fights, and even P mediocre that? fights. I said I agree with you now. Uh, you know, PBC is forced to put on better fights, and even though they're putting some mediocre fights on pay-per-view, but like moving forward, who's going to sign with this guy? Because he doesn't have the money to, to even pay these guys. No one really. No big, like, great fighters, because he don't have the money. Everyone else is going to be able to give you a better deal. Dude, he can't even, he don't even got the money to put some of these, like, as far as I knew, the roster reached like 100 fighters, if not more. Like, he doesn't have the money to put them to work. You know and what I'm saying? He doesn't have dates for them either. So, That's what I'm saying. They, so they, basically, he ain't got shit for them. Yeah, it's all downhill from here, man. It's all downhill for for PBC, unless he does something drastic. But it, you've never back in the day, we never saw Heyman sending his fighters to different networks and shit, and he's doing it now. So that lets you know the the problems he's in, because in order to like, <laughs> dates or fights, he's willing to send them to different platform to work with different uh promoters. Haney could have stayed with her and ESPN. Yeah, no, he could have. Yeah, he could have. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Not for this fight in particular, but for other fights, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But he worked out a great deal. Like, I can go fight anywhere I want, man. But whenever Again, like I can, I can bring you fights too, and you know, basically, I have a deal with you for whatever. Let's just say four fights, and you know, like whenever I want, I'll deal with it. Or these are the four fights. Like whenever, wow, if for out for my four fights, this is the deal under your promotional uh, banner and with the zone. But yeah. Yeah, he did it right. He did it the right way. When I talked to Bill and like got confirmation on that because I had heard it, but when Bill confirmed that, I was like, "Yes, like that." I will give him props for. So good, good and good for boxing. Yeah, if any of y'all still haven't seen that stream, when Bill comes on, go fucking watch that shit. It's just classic. Remember. Originally, Girl, I love shutting these people up with that stream because they'll be like, I'll be like, bro, <laughs> like Bill, I'll be like, Bill Haney himself said this. Oh, where's it at? He never said, it. boom, here it is. He'll be like, oh, where? I'm like, bro, I, I was like, literally watch the whole stream. I'm like, I don't know, figure it out, watch something for once. <laughs> yeah. What? Sounds, how about do some research? That way you actually know the truth. Exactly. Not fucking, I heard this. Yeah. Well, I mean, I heard it's fucking social media. <laughs> yeah, he read it in a comment somewhere. Yeah, somebody that fucking follows their own narrative that they listen to. Because people that tell the truth, they don't fucking listen to them. Yeah, I'm 30 minutes, yeah. Just... Oh, I need it already. We'll, we'll just take the big one. 
Don't take the little one, remember? Just the big one. Take the big one as soon as you go back in. I don't agree with that. I don't think they lost confidence in the network because Triple G Canelo 3 didn't happen. I just thought, well, I know the zone been wanting it though all along, but I don't know. The zone has a lot of shit, honestly. Yeah. If people are actual sports fans. Yeah, do you think any big fighter will ever speak the truth on Heyman's uh, boxing contracts and his control? Absolutely, but they have to – like when they're retired. Did Broner start speaking on the truth? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, still under contract, and he spoke the truth. But that's Broner. But, you know, uh, so a couple, yeah, you know, some, some guys have, but a lot of them probably will later on. But you know, also – like some of those guys, like the Thurman, the Charlos, uh, all, all the guys that went like kind of left old boy and went to uh, went to PBC at the very beginning. Like they all were getting huge paydays from them back then. So you know they had no reason to speak out against them because he was giving them so much money. But as the money dries up and go with them, and he won't let them go to other networks. Other promoters or whatnot, feel frustrated, and then you know when they some guys will start speaking out for sure. Remember, even when the guy like Don King, very few fighters spoke out uh, against them after their careers are over, just for whatever reason. I don't know. These guys are like, just they want to leave the past in the past. They're like, yeah, I got fucked over. I don't want to talk. About it. But some will for sure. Dude, did you watch the hot boxing with Mike Tyson with uh, Jamal Charlo on there? Uh, I don't watch the whole episode, but I saw some of the good clips from it. Yeah. Dude, the best was like literally Mike just went at him right away. Like the first five minutes, like was fucking crazy. He straight up was like, "Why you ain't calling out this guy? Who you want to fight? Like, tell him right now. Look at the camera. Like, dude, it was funny as fuck." <laughs> Yeah, he put him on the spot. Yeah, the guy was stuttering, dude. The guy was like, uh, I'll fight anybody. I want to fight the best. Just what sounds good as shit. Yeah. He's, like, Who? He's like, what are Mike's like, what are their names? Tell them. Look at the camera. Let them know right now. He's like, tell them you fucked their mother. Do whatever. He's, He's like, like, what about Benavidez? You know, like. He's like the Mexican monster. He's like, that ain't no Mexican monster. He's like, well, fight him then. Call him out. Call him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he did call out Benavidez. Benavidez. He said, I'll go up to 68 and knock out Benavidez. Benavidez said, let's do it right now. And then he said, well, I'm a 60-pounder. I'm not going up to 68. It's like, then why'd you talk about it? Why'd you say it? Loud mouth? Clearly, you, you don't want that smoke. Yeah, Porter. He allowed Porter to go over to ESPN. Um, he's done out with a couple, with a few guys. I can't remember their names right now, but... He, he did that with him. I let him go to other platforms. Dude, when Porter went to ESPN, PBC legit had nothing to do with that promotion, that airing, nothing. Like, you didn't see their logos anywhere. Fox wasn't involved. It was it was just all top rank in ESPN. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nathan uh, Friesen says, uh, Aram say, said that uh, he thinks Glovkin um, will lose or get knocked out. I don't, I don't think he said he... Did he say he thinks he will or it, he might uh, against Morata? It you know, makes me nervous as a Glove fan because whatever Bob says usually happens. Why do you think he's saying this? Well, he gave his reasons. He said the guy's old, uh, like 40 years old, a pro- professional fighter at 40, uh, you know, 350 amateur fights, you know, long career. He goes, it's a lot of wear and tear, you know, and fought a year. You know, traveling over to Japan to fight Murata. Murata is a hell of a fighter himself. So he gave all his reasons. And it's, uh, to me, it's 50 50 fight. It is. Like, I've, I've ever since like 2015, 2016, this fight was, you know, a possibility. I always said it's, it's basically a shootout. Um, I gave Golovkin the edge back then. It was more like 60 40. But now, dude, it's 50 50. This fight, dangerous fight, which is why it's so good. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's why is he saying it? He he gave his reasons, like wear and tear, age. Um, now, you know who we saw in the last two roles. I just rewatched that Rolex fight. Um, 
Dude, he did not look bad in that fight. Mm-hmm. Landed like four punches, like four significant punches the entire fight. <laughs> Marta really didn't land any. Um, and Zamarta's fast. I get it, it's just Zamarta, but still, he's you know fast. Um, and Rolls is way bigger, you know, in his prime, came to win. Same as Zamarta, not bigger, but in his prime. And he dominated those guys. So uh, obviously, he has slipped a bit. But it's not, it's not a significant slip yet. Now, maybe he will have aged a little bit in this last year. But, I mean, I mean tra- training, he's looking like a monster, honestly. Uh, maybe on a little something-something. But if so, that's that's good for him. Like him, everyone else is. But here, I saw a little training clip of and today, let me see if I can find it. No, it's just today. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Look at his forearms in this next one now. It's just shit, dude. Diesel. Right there. Look at that, dude. Dude. That's Schwarzenegger level. Look at look at his forearms, man. But clean as a whistle, huh? Yeah, TRT GGG. Exactly, my man. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a 160, 70 pound man's forearms look like that ever. I don't care how hard you train. Oh, all right. Yeah, he's like, fuck that. I'm going to be just so too. <laughs> We're going to war. Hell yeah, man. You know he got that high tech Russian shit too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's big. That is big. You know, plus he probably understands he has to start bulking up too. He wins. Oh yeah, he's moving up in weight. Yeah, sixty-eight. Yeah. For the first time in his career, right? Yep. Yep. Fight for undisputed too. He's won it undisputed his whole career. It's. One fight. All he got to do is win one fight. And boom, he has it. Not a middleweight, but still. So it's going to be a war. Man, I hope he looks good in his next, next week. Too. Me too. I hope he looks good. I hope. I've won yeah. three, four years now or something like that. Three years. Yeah, like three years. Well, four, I think. I don't know. Yeah, four. I think they fought last in 2018. Yeah, you're right. 2018. Sucks. We had to wait four years to get the rematch or the trilogy, but it's better because he gets to he gets to be on some shit now too for the rematch. And really, he's rested as fuck. Yeah, yeah. You know, to say the wear and tear he had, well, gives him some time to recover. Exactly. And if he's on some shit, then. At whatever little slippage he had, it's, it's you know, it kind of nullifies it and you know, it takes him back down to say like seven years old, 38, 6, 37 years old. So, really, he'd be like the same as when they fought in their second fight. Yeah, he's motivated, man. Yeah, it's going to be, dude, it's going to be a good build up to it. It's going to be. I just hope he's allowed to use his shit also. I think he will, though, because I, I don't think Canelo will want drug testing. If if Triple G is like, yeah, yeah he'll want drug testing. <laughs> oh, did you hear that there's no drug testing for the Spence fight? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday with um, Victor Conti bringing that up. 
Yeah. And I guess like they yeah, they've been yeah, you're right. If you saw the same Vic, Victor Conti tweet, yeah. I guess they're just like ignoring the question. Yeah. Oh, and did you see that he what he brought up with PBC fighters? How um doesn't announce anything with PBC fighters, which you know doesn't mean they are uh like not using it, but it does kind of there's a reason for them not wanting to announce through Wada because they'd hardly ever getting announced. Really, it kind of exposes PBC fighters as the majority of shit. It is what it is. They kind of shoot themselves in the foot. But yeah, I mean, he asked. Uh, he asked everybody involved in the fight, like. Or is Vada being this? No one has responded. Will respond. It ain't like nobody. They all respond to them if they are using it. So the fact that they haven't goes with it or not. Yeah, if they were, they'd just be like, of course. Yeah, there, you know, there it is. Morata already admitted he can't block for Golovkin, so he's going to have to be right. Oh. And he he needs the box then try and make it a fight. Oh, he's gonna get fucked up if he tries to bang it out with Golovkin. Then it's gonna be a short night. <laughs> Attack Titan says, damn, Golovkin looks big, son. I know, right? I know, right? He's bulking up for sure. Because if he wins this, he gotta go to 68. So triple G on that Jesus. Yep, roid up as much as you can, my dude. Roid up. I mean, he got a a, a new new he got a, tr- a nutritionist, like a proper nutritionist for the first time in his career, and a, a proper strength and conditioning coach for the first time in his year uh, in his career. And he, he's working with Banks now, who's obviously trains a lot different than uh, Abel Sanchez. So he's working and he's training at C level. Now, which was always, you're never supposed to train uh, a full camp at uh, uh, Big Bear. You know, you train throughout the day up in Big Bear, but then you go down to sea level to sleep. You know, so Roy Jones explained that. Like, you can't stay at sea level for a whole camp because it's it's actually a hindrance to your stamina. Um so he should have better stamina now just on that alone. Um, you know, strength and conditioning coach, nutritionist, and, you know, working new muscles with just banks, like a new uh, different types of training is going to, you know, send a shock to different parts of your body. I mean, dude's in all kinds of just to, you know, physically, he's probably in the best shape of his like life. Doesn't mean that. He hasn't aged a bit, but physically he looks the, in the best shape of his life. Yeah. Triple G looks huge, man. Like, he's not going to be entering the ring at no 170 uh, this fight. You know, like he always has throughout his middleweight career. He only rehydrates 10 pounds, but he's going to be rehydrating like 16, 17. And then, uh, yeah, he's never looked like this. He, he never looked the best he ever looked in the ring. The Zeramenta fight, he never looked that ripped. So right there, that sent off like bells and whistles in my head. And now he's even looking better than that one. So big drama shoulders. <laughs> hey, look, all you can hope, though, is that he's allowed to do whatever he's doing here in the Canelo fight. If so, then we should really get a good uh, a good fight. You go see. You don't look as chiseled when his muscle relaxed. Uh, on the other hand, you can make the assumption. Put it side by side, and you understand. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but he's just bigger, bigger, and still diesel. Um, like not. He's not putting on fat, that's for sure. His arms have never been that big, not even close.
I mean, just, again, look at his wrist uh, or forearms right here. What are you thinking with uh, Shakur Stevens and Valdez? Look at him forearms. That's nuts. I mean, I've been watching this dude train his whole career. He never had forearms like that, man. But he doesn't look as crazy chiseled as when he's just uh, – there, there it is right there, that one especially. Dude, that's like right out of a – that's like freakish. Freakish. Look at the size of his wrist. Bicep. And look at his forearms. His forearms look bigger than his bicep. Crazy. But he, he still, still, he doesn't look like he's doing uh, a lot of it. Like he didn't, he didn't have some crazy, insane transformation like Nello, like where his whole um, he lost his neck and everything. He still has his neck, like, and that's like the big spot where, you know, your whole neck will just turn into Mike Tyson's neck. Like Canelo is on the back of his neck now. It's wild. I mean, yeah, look at his arms there. His shoulders are huge. I mean, I I, I think he's on something. It wouldn't surprise me if he's not, though, because he's never had a strength conditioning coach. That alone could do wonders with proper nutrition. That could also do wonders, but I, I think he's reached the point, just like Kovalev. Like, oh, these other motherfuckers are on it. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use it too. And he doesn't have a WBC belt now, so he don't have. He's not doing Vada testing, I don't believe. Does he? Yeah, he does have some belts, though, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, WBA and IBO. No W, no, 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 no WBC. Plus, ever since COVID, like Vada, Vada or USADA with the UFC, they haven't been able to test it. They're probably going to start being able to do a little more now. But you can tell he's spending. He's uh, you can tell he's trying to bulk up too, though. Like he was never all that big on the weight training, and he is so that you know you'll get new. Meetings. Like right there, he don't look still shredded. Like if Canelo was sitting there, he'd still be all shredded. But yeah. It's going to be a hell of a fight, man. Hell of a fight. I can't wait for this, this weekend, man. Whoa, buddy. Dude, I can't wait for every weekend. I know. I know. I know. What kind of roids Marata taking? I, I'm, I'm sure he's taking something too, man. I promise that, man. Marata juicing like you know, I don't know. There's not much training of Marata. Let's see what we can find on him. Uh, let's filter it for this month. Mostly, oh, Golovkin. So here we go. Twelve days ago. Okay. See how oh, he's on some Drago shit. <laughs> he's on some Drago shit. What the fuck? Is this, man? 
He's a fucking Asian experiment now. Yeah. What what the hell? I've never seen that before with anyone. I've only saw that in Rocky Four. Yeah, if he dies, he dies. <clears throat> oh, let me go back real quick. They reinforced his bones with titanium and shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he's training harder than he's ever trained in his fucking life. Because he ain't never fought anyone nearly as good as Golovkin. But like, that's what you tend to get with guys like Tyson and Canelo and Golovkin. Like, guys tend to, you know, name Floyd. Like, guys. Hey, with- is that a unification fight? Yes. Oh, okay. Yo, I'm sorry. No, no. Golovkin has WBO, right? WBO and IBO? Because he's the WBA champ. Or is Golovkin has the Golovkin have the IBF? I forget. Yeah, it's unification. Man, it's gonna be good as fuck, man. I know. What's it gonna be on the zone? Uh yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't pay for that shit, but I saw the prices went up on that shit too. Wait, Golovkin has the IBF. Yeah, Golovkin has the IBF. And uh IBF. But you know, it don't matter. He got the IBF. Maranta got the WBA super. Put your shirt off, boy. I downloaded the Odyssey and I started following you, but I didn't turn the notifications on. How's it going over there? Um, good, good. We just did a stream the other day. Uh, uh, Devin Haney, uh, Cambosos film study stream. So we watched their last two fights. You know, right on the stream, play it over there, broke them down. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll check it out at work tomorrow. Oh, guys, what um, what film study do you want? What what video do you want me to do on uh, audit uh? Odyssey. So I know I took some requests last time. Uh, it could be like a film study of a fighter, old fighter. Uh, any, any video suggestions you guys have? Because uh, I'm doing this for y'all just as much. I got a tablet right here to write them on. I was going to do something. Instead of this stream. Oh, you got the little Bruce Lee and Loma thing. Hand eye coordination. Of course, miss. Mental sharpness. Oh, he's pretty good, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait for this fight. Y'all never take his shirt off, really. The only time you see him is early in this. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he's in good shape. Probably be the best shape he's ever been in. Let's go, Lewis. But what do you mean? You guys talking rescores or, or what? I'm not even talking about a rescore. I mean, well, because we could do rescores together on stream. You know what I mean? So I would prefer just like, you know, some rescore. Because, you know, when we do our over there, we, we do rescores a lot of times. Sugar Ray, 
Robinson is he the goat or what? Is he? That's actually a really good one. Really good idea. Yeah, Marathi, he's like six foot tall. <clears throat> he's six feet tall. Yeah. How tall is Triple G? Five eight. I think he's six one, actually, dude. Um and Triple G's what? Five ten and a half. I'll check what he is right now. Let's see. He's six foot and a half. So he's two inch tall. He has a seventy five inch reach. Golovkin got like a seventy one, a seventy. <clears throat> so he got a five inch reach advantage and a height advantage. Yeah, we're gonna be doing that one, Jack Platt, Whitaker, Chavez. Uh, wait, what were you talking about, Chavez? Yeah, okay, yeah. We we already talked about that one. over there for sure. <laughs> A film study on Ronnie Forrest. Yeah, I can do that. Sugar Ray Robinson. A real good one, though. I brought that up. Oh, I can give a shot. Uh, fun grades. Someone was talking. Hey, what up, Nordic? God bless, brother. You wanna, you wanna link? Let me. Know. Um, what other uh, like older legends, really? Yeah, the, the is Sugar Ray the goat, and could he um, beat the guys? I like that one a lot. Oh, Sam Langford one. That Tano Mantis. Well, I did one on him already on a stream here, um, uh, but uh, but I want to listen. I got you. Bro. I got you. I got you, Nordic. Marciano. Because I still got like a proper um, Canelo Bivol one coming, um, a proper Virgil Ortiz one since, you know, my the Virgil Ortiz one I did a long time ago got you know, nuked. I got a, I downloaded a bunch of his fights. Uh, I'll be doing that. But I can bust them out because, you know, they're roughly, you know, I mean, they're just easy. You know, I just sit down, play it, break it down. I like doing them, though. They're you know, not easy. They're time-consuming and whatnot, but, you know, they're fun. They're fun. There's a link if anyone does want to jump on, though. But uh, Sam Langford, see, I can pull it. I can pull him up right now. Oh, I know what the one was. Fucking Golovkin Hagler. <laughs> Someone that asked me to do that for me. I told him I would. All right. There's even color of Sam Langford, the, the Bill Lang fight. 
Uh, Joe Jeanette. Oh, Langford versus Joe Jeanette. In color. I didn't see this one. Okay, yeah, let's play this. All right, I'm going to keep listening. I got some things to do. Thanks for letting me on, man. I'll, t- I'll, I'll talk to you. Hey, thanks for jumping on. Man. All right, no problem. Okay. Oh, Alan. Yeah, but again, with any of the rescores, because like we can do those during a stream, you know? <clears throat> oh, on, on Odyssey. Duran Leonard won rescore and film study. Oh, and that's kind of one I need to like do on my own, honestly. But I was going down. Out of. I don't know if I would do a, a rescore of it, but a film study of it would be good. See how it goes if I could do a rescore as well. All right, this is Sam Langford versus Joe Jeanette. All right. I'm going to have to slow it down since it's already a little crappy, though, where we can actually see the punches landing. Being thrown and all that. Uh, I mean, th- again, not much skill here. Like, I this look, man. It's the one thing I can't stand about these fucking box wreck warriors, uh, and talking all that shit. Like these guys had way more skill than the cats of today and whatnot. The fuck they did. Okay, they didn't even know how to box by today's standards. Like, if you saw one of these guys in a ring today. You'd call them a bum immediately. If you didn't know who they were, you'd call them a bum instantly, okay? Uh, but they had skills for their time, okay? For their time, they were some of the most skilled fighters out there. But the one thing about Sam, Sam he had an iron chin, hit like a mule, and was just tough, right? So he could just kind of walk you down. And then he would just whoosh, whoosh, swing on you. And you'll see this here. So he'd hit a motherfucker and and hurt them. But come on, man. We got to stop. Not us, but just people in general acting like Sam was just, uh, and resume-wise, whatever. I don't care about that, okay? Shove his resume up his ass. I care about how good is he, you know, um, throughout the the – comparison of every era of fighters i know he was great for his era so we're gonna actually you know talk about him in comparison to today's fighters how you doing alan hey what's up going on oh not much okay um sam is in the the black like trunks here he's the guy on the right are they both ball headed? Oh, he's the clear. No, he's the ball headed guy right here on the left, like the little black trunk. He's built like a tank. He's built like Canelo, short, stocky. Man, how old is this? Yeah, I know. There's better. I mean, actually, this one sucks, man. Better quality. Yeah. All right. Langford versus Jim Flynn. 1910. Black and white is a little better. And that shit. This kind of sucks too. Uh, This one's a little better since it's in color. This is the one we used before, but it works. It's only a few rounds, but it works. Uh, this is Langford versus Total Bum, but still. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that funny already? Yeah, yeah. You can just see the guy doesn't know how to punch. Yeah, it uh, just lunges forward, like like just try to grab Langford. See, he just stalks him because, you know, Lang knows like he can't get close to me. 
Dude, this is pretty Gloves bad. Down. Now, like a jab, he wouldn't be able to handle it. A proper jab would just tag him. Oh, and he did. He just did. Right there. As soon as he gets squared up. And he fires the jab. Boom. Cracks him. Steps off. The lang ain't stopping. Yeah, this guy don't have a clue what he's doing. <laughs> All right, here we go. And he's looking, look at Lang fall off of balance when he throws his haymaker. Throws his hit with a right, throws a left hook, misses it, and totally almost falls over. Totally almost falls over. And Lang throws a left hook. Boom, hits him little body. Looks like that right, straight left, I guess. From, or no, straight right from Sam landed. Jab from Sam lands. But again, could you imagine walking straight in on a guy like that? And it's just down. Like All you got to do is just... Take a step forward, and boom, pop him. If he gets close, he's putting right hand up to knock this glove down and swing a hard left hook. Usually what he does. He would lay down against the Klitschko. Oh, God, yeah. He gets destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you hear, too. This guy could beat Klitschko because he beat guys who weighed 240 pounds before. Yeah, fat fucking blobs of shit. You know? He beat a 200-pounder before. Yeah, but not like 250 pounds of solid, dense muscle with crazy boxing technique, you know, ramrod jabs who, like, you know, other six-foot-four guys can't even get close to him. And they're they beat the shit out of Lang, like or Langford. Yeah, I was watching one of those career breakdown videos uh, for Vlad. Yeah, and it just reminded me. I'm like, man, this dude was an animal, man. Like, holy shit, he was an animal. And look, Langford could punch, right? But dude, mm -hmm. he hit fucking Vladimir Klitschko flush. And it ain't bothering them, man. It's not. Like, people think because, you know, Klitschko. I mean, look how many times AJ bombed on him. Flush! Did Klitschko fall every time? No. No. He fell, what, once? Maybe twice or something? But he got hit with a hundred bombs. Flush. Didn't go anywhere. You know? Like, all, all the other guys who hit him dead on. You know what goes down a few times out of the hundreds of bombs he took? Yeah, no, he he was a tough dude, man. Yeah, now what what Langford did for his era, great, great for his era, and that's where it needs to stop. Yeah, it's like a Jesse Owens, all right, great for his era. But put him in a race today, and like you said, Usain Bolt smokes him. Like, does that make Jesse Owens garbage? No. But people have to keep it in perspective. Nobody, this dude, this is where boxing fans are fucking retarded, right? You don't see any other guys, like, let's say track and field guys, being like, man, Jesse Owens was the GOAT. You put him in today, he dust, he dust. Usain Bolt. Like, no, he wouldn't. No one even says such a thing because they know it's not true. But only in boxing do you hear that. Like, yeah, a guy from 1910 is, you know, 1908 or 1910, whatever, totally going to beat a guy from 2020. Sure. Sure. Now, could a guy like Hank Armstrong be like a top 20 guy of today? Yeah, yeah, but he also might lose too. Like he beat some, lose some, but like out of the top guys? No, man, no. 
And we've done a film study on him before on a stream. And it was kind of fucking... Oh, look. Lang just drills him with a straight right. The gut can't even block it. Doesn't even attempt. Just eats it. Right, here, it here it comes. And... Boom! Right through his jaw. And it actually sends him stumbling back and he throws up his left guard there because he knows he just ate a hell of a shot. I'll play that in full time again. Lang steps around and boom! Crashed him. Imagine if that was Klitschko. I don't give a shit how iron his chin is. The guy, you know, what? At most, Lang was like a buck 80. Yeah, he looks blown up in that. Oh, yeah, he's way blown up in a buck 80. Yeah, way blown up. So imagine a guy with 70 pounds on you, just drilling you. One of the hardest hitters ever. Or imagine like Lennox Lewis fighting his dude or something. <laughs> Come on, man. Or Mike Tyson. Oh, I guess Langford would beat Mike Tyson, too, because he got a better... Uh, he got a better resume in his era than Mike and his or something like that, they'll say. But Mike ain't got fucking 20 losses to a bum named Fred Fulton. If Lang knew what he was doing in there, he'd have a good chance on winning. Man, is he little. Built like a tank. He's like easy E. Built like a tank, yet not hard to hit. <laughs> easy was hard to hit. This, this, this is like watching Lou Savarese versus James Tony or something, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's even worse than that, though. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> Look at these guys. They're like, get the fucking towels out of my face. <laughs> Jeez, three towels going. Chill out, man. All right. Look at him running shit. Look at look at Lang's footwork here, man. Look at him cross his legs. Cross his legs once. <laughs> cross his leg. Look at this. Look at his leg cross. Look at this. Whoop. Cross, like, cross his legs twice. Oh, my God. Bad. Bad. Crosses them again, and Lang couldn't. Crosses them again. <laughs> you gonna fight this man or what? He's I mean, just the, the way this guy leans forward. He won't even fight. He just jumps forward and clinches. And Lang don't really seem to know what to do. Let's see, but here you have like this tall guy, like bending at the knees, leaning forward, hands down. It's like any trainer today would be like, no, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you, and it's weird because even back then you would think, well, what would be the, you would like think like, what would be the best way to stand to avoid getting hit if you're the taller guy? Maybe fight tall? Yeah. No, I, I, I agree, like uh, like you're saying, right, that um, boxing has been a linear progression, especially in America. But it, it makes me wonder if it's always been that way, like if other cultures haven't taken it to, like, you know, a high level yeah. in the past. Yeah, yeah. No, I see it, yeah. It's, good. it's a good point. Who knows? Um, I mean, like, Russians had the... Like the same way Russians fight today, they were fighting mm -hmm. like that in the seventies. That's for sure. 
like uh you know because you you could find uh film of like the entire like olympics from back back in like say like really the 60s like all these day um and when you know they don't have necessarily the entire thing but they'll have all the americans and when an american would fight a russian you can see that they were still fighting virtually the same as they are now um but you know huh. just never got to see them but he cocks yeah. it, yeah, cocks it the whole way back. Cock, shoots it, boom, cracks right into him. And it just sticks his chin out, dips his head down. It's just like <laughs> it's awkward to watch. And Langford's gonna get close to him here and smash him and again. This is why it's hard. He swings just like the guy. Well, he he swings better than the Amaro bums of today. At least he got his right hand still by his chin when he throws a big old left hook. <laughs> oh, and drives the right hand on though. Here, Langford's maybe gonna open up finally. Boom, Nels him Lang Nels Langford with another big straight right. And he throws his left hook and fell off balance again. Same thing we saw earlier, same place in the ring too. Also, you don't see guys of today like really make mistakes like that. Like not the oh ran right into a jab. Just like I said, could you imagine if you know I like did this today, just walked in hands down. All you got to do is step forward, pop with the jab. Lang does it right here. Boom! Knock them back, too. So if this bum could do it, imagine what a guy today's era would do. Oh, wait. He does punch like the marrow bums of today. Yeah, he, yeah he's doing that Spence shit. Crucifix, yeah, crucifix and the legs and everything. <laughs> yeah. Punch is just like Spence. Damn. Boom! Nailed, nailed Langford with a left hook. His hands are down, so what happens? Boom! Now Langford has to chase him, follow him around some more. Missed that one. What they gave Langford a straight right there, too. I mean, look, he's so wild. Yeah. Atrocious. Oh, nailed him. Lang nailed him right there. Oh, then nailed him again with an uppercut. Oh, let's go back. Damn. Oh, shit. Boom. It's some right there with a straight. It's some with a jab. <laughs> Missed this. Right? These dudes would get ragdolled by Ooh, modern fighters. He them again with a big right. He's actually winning these exchanges. Clinches him and then he hits him on an uppercut right here because he got him bent over. Here it comes. Boom! Picked him right up. And Langford didn't land shit. Oh, and then he throws another big right, misses. So Langford. it's it's safe to say that if you took all the greats from the past and put them in a ring against the greats of today, like they would just get chinned and yeah, fucking ragdolled. You know, it might be tough, so they might like endure a beating, but they're, they're mm -hmm. gonna be crushed. Crushed. Now, damn yeah, man, come on. Looks like Langford was doing good there. Maybe can't really tell though. He's unloading. I don't know how much is landing. Oh, he dropped them. Yep. All right, here we go.
All right, here he goes. Now on the straight right. See how he does this. <laughs> goes right under it. And clinches. See how little punches they threw back then, too? Imagine these guys of today. Like, they couldn't even handle the punch output. Boom. Jab them. It's one punch. <laughs> Boy, Lang was a jab and grabber. I think all these big dudes today would just stand tall, lean back, you know, wait for Langford to swing those wide hooks and then just fucking just clock them, man. Sleep them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, even if you, like, fought, like, this dude at, like, his best weight, like, is a middleweight, he'd get crushed. Dude, J Jamal Charlo would sleep this fool. But again, not saying he wasn't great for his era. Just saying not great for, like, today. You know, he wouldn't be a great fighter today. Now, Wait. maybe if he was, you know, transported to 2020 or so 2022 or whatever as, like, a 14-year-old boy, like through time travel, it was a four, before he ever learned how to box. That way, he still had that old school toughness in him. Like he wasn't like you know raised in an air conditioned house and all that. You brought him here as like a fourteen year old boy and throw him in a boxing gym with a great coach. Maybe then he could be a hell of a middleweight. But you know, why was so? What was Silver saying? Uh, do you realize boxing was invented uh, by the British? Yeah, I think everybody knows that, buddy. Maybe modern boxing, but boxing yeah, goes modern. all the way back to ancient Greece. It goes all the way back to ain't like men. Yeah, everyone punched. You punched. If you didn't have a weapon, you punched. But yeah, like modern boxing was yeah created by everyone knows that. It's like yeah, the the queen. What is it? The queen or uh, the Marcus of Queensbury. And yeah, Mark A of Queensbury, yeah. Then you had like the London rules at one time. Oh, yeah. Now, a guy like um you know this again, it's not I, I really if you go back like two eras some of the guys, like the guys from two eras past, I'll compare them. Like they, they would have a chance to compete with the guys, you know, if they're again, especially even guys like say go, you know, because think about it right now with this era. Then you go back to like say uh, the 2010s, and then to the 2000s. So the guys from 2000 to 2010, and 2010 to 2000. Uh, 20, the guys who were still left, obviously some of these guys when they were fighting now are still in the 2010 to 2020, but even the guys around 2000 to 2010, all those guys could compete today. All of them. They'd be kicking ass too. Like they'd walk the fucking floor with all these Amaro bums today. Um, so the two, two, two eras, you can compare two eras. Um, even the guys from the 90s would fuck up most of the guys of today. Bro, David Tua would be a belt holder in this era, but Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He would have signed a fight Wilder and chinned him like in two or something, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> would have, he would have. Oh my God, man! And yeah, look, Wilder hits like a mule, but I don't know if he could hurt Tua. I don't think I don't know if he could zap Tua like that, man. Well, you know, like like look at the way Tua came out against uh, John Ruiz, right? 
and Wilder has no defense or footwork, so it would just be like a truck heading for a a, a, a deer, man. Or how he came out with Heiko Bayabuchi. But Heiko Bayabuchi had a hell of a chin. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine Heiko Bayabuchi fighting today. Oh, that, that, to me, that's... Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest uh, spilt milk ever in boxing, man. The Bayabuchi, man. That dude could have been a freaking animal. I really, Look, man, I get it. He... I don't know, man. I ha- I will always believe that that David Tua fight, like, contributed to his... Like dementia, yeah, yeah. Like psychopathy and just being a fucking maniac. You never know. That's a good point. It's hard to believe, like you took that because, dude, every two a punch is basically a baseball bat with a tower wrapped around it to the head. <laughs> <laughs> every one, every punch, it's a baseball bat with a tower wrapped around it, right to the head. Boom! Like, yeah, that's a little bit of cushion, so it ain't gonna like crack your skull, but it's gonna fuck you up. I just wish she would have made it to a fight with Lennox, man. Yeah. yeah. That would have been a classic, bro. The Bayapucci versus Lewis. Yeah. Oh, the Buster Douglas to beat Tyson would beat Wilder. No doubt about it, man. No doubt about it. Yeah. Buster Douglas to beat Tyson would probably beat AJ. Probably beat, I mean, he'd beat damn near, dude. He can compete with any heavyweight that ever lived, period. That was one of the best heavyweights you'll ever see, honestly. It was for one night, but yeah, it all came together that one night. It's like R- uh, Riddick Bow. It all came together yeah. one night. But, you know, that's you got to be able to sustain it. Buster Douglas called upon the boxing gods for one night, man, and they <laughs> blessed him. His mother's spirit jumped into him. Said, you, ain't, you ain't folding on this one, baby. You're going to I always liked that story. How, you know, he got the call to fight Mike, and his mom was like, Don't you dare fight that man, son. He's scary. <laughs> he's crazy. You don't fight him. Don't you dare fight him. And he's like, Mom, Mom, you know, I'll tell you, I can do it. I can do it. And she goes, Baby, do you really think you could beat him? And he said, Yeah, I know I can. She goes, All right, then you go do it. But if you're going to do it, you better give it your best. And then she passed away a couple of days later. So Oof, it's, on. Yeah, it's like it's on now. So if somebody if I was Mike's team, I'd have been like, eh, eh, <laughs> fights called off, right? <laughs> oh, how many, how many, how many times have we talked about that shit, right? Like somebody on Mike's team should have been aware of that shit, and they'd be like, no, 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 call this fight off right now. <laughs> well, just call it off now. We'll schedule for six months down the road. Yeah. We'll have grieved and been okay by then. Nah, let him go. Like, no, I'm not doing it. No. I would like, run all the way through camp. Yeah. Off. Made him get all that great training in and be like, uh uh-uh, uh, we're done. Yeah. Like, like, time you don't train like that. We're going to have to shoot this man to stop him tonight, man. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he's going to walk through anything. Yeah. <laughs> Holyfield versus Usyk at Cruiser. Who wins? Uh, Usyk does. Usyk, for sure. Um, Holyfield was too easy to hit. He was too easy to hit. He didn't have defense. Uh, not really a cruiserweight. Like, yeah, you know, he just did the cross arm, but he still his whole head's right here. Like, he would have just been getting hit on top of the head. It would have been hard for him to get, um, to get to Usyk. Uh, you know, Usyk got, you know, he got a reach on him. It was same height, but he, 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 he he can punch with, with a longer range, longer jabs. Um, Holy Holyfield's defense is extremely overrated. He ate crazy punches all the time. That's the one thing. I Someone debated me on that, so I actually we did a film study with Holyfield, and they were like, all right, all right, just stop. Like, same thing with Boots. Just like, all right, you're right, you're right. I get it, I get it. <laughs> Too easy to hit, man. Um, but... He ain't knocking them out, and it's going to be a hell of a fight. You know, it's going to be a war, but, yeah, Usyk would would win. Um, Look, Holyfield throws a lot of punches. So does Usyk, right? But uh, Usyk, you know, he's just too hard to hit. So you can throw all the punches you want, like Holyfield, but 
most like hardly any of them are gonna land because he threw mostly hooks. He never threw straight punches. He was hook, 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 hook. Oh come on, that ain't that ain't landing, man. That ain't landing. Oh yeah, come on. If if James Tony bodied Holyfield, Usyk would just freaking demolish him, man. Yeah. Yeah. You think Douglas would have beaten any heavyweight on that night? Um Yeah, it's very possible. It's very possible. He definitely would have beat any holy uh, or any heavyweight on like an active uh, in that time that night. I believe that for sure. Because even even uh, out of shape Tyson, who didn't want to be there, was better than any heavyweights on earth <laughs> at that point. So yeah, yeah, he would have beat anybody. I would have liked to have seen. Um, like that, Buster Douglas versus the the whole the the um the Ali that fought Frazier the first time. That'd have been a hell of a fight. Has there ever been a more dominant heavyweight than Vladimir though? I think he may even be a an edge above Tyson, man. Just in terms of length. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, all I could think of, um, like on a steady run, the only people really that can come close would be like a Larry Holmes, um, Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, not Muhammad Ali because he had too many breaks. Uh, um, and he did lose to Joe Frazier on his comeback anyway. But we'll even throw Ali in there. Um Too many of all these opponents were just they're, they're relatively scrubs, you know, really relatively bums. Um, they were happy to just get the fight. He'd pick them out of obscurity, like he did Ken Norton. Pick Ken Norton out of fucking obscurity, but can beat him. So it's like, <laughs> geez, right? Um, could you imagine like Klitschko pulling some dude from obscurity and losing to him three times? Yeah. Uh Joe Lewis. Uh, was dominant, but again, he fought so many bums. Um, yeah, that's where we got the bum of the month club from. Yeah. No, I don't think there really has been, man, because once he went on his tear, it was over. No one could beat him. Nobody. Nobody. And he was like brutally dominant too. He was just knocking people out, man. He didn't even have close fights, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, he was definitely the most uh nah, dude. The Klitschko era was not weak. No. Wrong. Wait, this is how you know it ain't weak. The second he retired, it's the golden era, the second golden era of heavyweights. Nah, that was the American, that was fucking Western. Media's um, uh, narrative and agenda being pushed because he wasn't fighting in America. He was bringing all that heavyweight money over to Eastern Europe. You know, with him, if he would have been fighting in America, oh, you know, if he would have been bringing that money, they wouldn't have said that shit. Look, I mean, how, let's go look at his fucking resume. How can someone say that shit, man? No, they just didn't like what he was doing. <clears throat> Holy shit. All right. Dude, so both, started both. With Devaro Williamson. Okay, I get it. Not that great. And Alicio Castillo, which that was actually a good opponent, man. He was undefeated, fucking destroyed him. Um, four rounds. And he fought Sam Peter. I was just going to say that, right? Chris Peter. Bird, okay, undefeated Calvin Brock, Ray Austin, Layman Brewster, you know, the rematch with Layman, e Sultan Ibragamov, um, undefeated Sultan Ibragamov, Tony Thompson, one loss, who went there to fight his ass off, lasted 11 fucking rounds too, Hasim Rachman, I uh, get it, you know, a little past his prime, but he, you know, whatever. 
Undefeated Ruslan Chagayev. Uh, one loss, Eddie Chambers. Again, he fought Sam Peter in uh, the re, uh, rematch. And David Hay. Uh, Jean-Marc Mormack, you know, nothing amazing. I uh, gave Tony Thompson a rematch because, you know, the fight was a good fight. So he blew him out in six this time, though. Um, undefeated Maurice Walk. Um, Francisco Pian uh, Pianetta. Again, dude, come on. You know, put him today. He's fucking everything up. 28 no, undefeated. Blew him out in six. Povetkin. No, to undefeated Povetkin. Yeah. Performance. I get it. Uh, but beat him. Um, Leopai. Yeah, nothing amazing. Pulev. Undefeated Pulev. Oh, it's a great win for AJ, but eh. Even though he dude. got fucking dominated versus. Uh, but this dude, Chain, acts like. So that much. one. Then undefeated Bryant Jennings. You know, then he uh, loses to Tyson Fury and goes 11. Uh, and he went the distance with him still. I get it. You know, got beaten decisively. I want to re I rewatch that anyway. See how good uh, Fury actually looked. <laughs> and AJ, who he, you know, really beat and let off the hook. It was weird. But, um, yeah, it is what it is, man. Now, uh, it would have been interesting if that fight wasn't stopped right when it was. But again, you know, the new king, he goes, gives the, he basically, like, that was the fight that changed Joshua. From that point on, Joshua was all downhill and gave, I mean, it was outside of Usyk, like, fuck the Ruiz thing, because that was one punch, you know. He actually was neck and neck with AJ all fight and really whooped his ass round after round after round after round at one point. No one else ever did that with AJ. Have nobody, you know, except the one once he got his equilibrium knocked with Ruiz, but that wasn't like skill doing it. That was the guy who couldn't walk um, besides Usyk. I mean, so it's like – the the best guy of that time, he was still 50-50 with him as a old fucking man. No, that's a hell of a run. He basically fought all fucking undefeated fighters. Except one, two, three, four, five, six. And a one loss guy, but the amount of undefeated fighters this guy fought like everyone knows, undefeated fighters the hardest to beat, and that's what he's doing running the dude. He fought the he he fought the number one. The, that, that's a no man, that's a hell of a resume. Hell of a resume. How's that every week? How, how, and again, the second he retires, all of a sudden it's the Second golden age of the heavyweights. You know, well, this Pavekin, who we beat. AJ, who he was dead even with as an old man. Tyson Fury and Wilder. That's it. That's and to, me, to me, it sounds like Chain is working on the premise that that one-two that, that he dismisses is a one-two that any of these other guys in the past would have dealt with. Yeah. And, and what the fuck are you talking about? Why don't I give Canelo credit for unbeaten fighters? Well, because they're they're bums, okay? These were actually damn good heavyweights. And when it's not just the the credit for the I don't really talk that much shit about the guy he fought, it's the wonky cards. You know, like what am I gonna do? Give him like who? Well name name me one. Name me an undefeated fighter I'm supposed to give him credit for. Tell me one. Name me one. Caleb Plant. Don't dare fucking say plant. Like, you see what I'm saying? No, plant ain't good. Other guys were. Answer me. And Klitschko wasn't fucking robbing guys. He was defeating them. He was beating them. Not going neck and neck and the fight could go either way. And then he gets the decision. No, he dominated them. 
who the fuck, who, who's this undefeated uh, fighter I'm supposed to be giving him credit for? Who? Again, Caleb fucking Plant, Saunders. Like, get out of here, dude. It's your fucking troll ass comment. Yeah, about the best opposition available, whatever you think of his era. And his era wasn't that weak. Again, it, how did it go from weak to the very next day, second golden age of boxing? How? How? Straight hate. Yeah, it's fucking hate, man. But Oh, but if I criticize Wilder, I'm a hater, but they can criticize Klitschko all they want who actually dominated the best fucking, you know, one of the, it was actually one of the best heavyweight eras ever. It's probably the third best. You know, you have all these. Actually, no, I think the 90s were technically better fighters and more of them. But, you know, the, the like 70s, 90s, and Klitschko's era. That's it. It's the third best. Third best. So how's it weak? But somehow AJ is the golden era. But it, that is it's actually weak. You know? The fucking five guys uh, so far for like seven years straight has been five guys. <laughs> bro, how how badly would Vlad have beat down Andy Ruiz, bro? Or Parker. You know what I mean? Or Wilder, who ducked him. For the record, um, you know who? Or imagine AJ, if Prime AJ like went light 50-50, neck and neck with an old Klitschko. Imagine what a Prime Klitschko would have did to him. Oh, forget it. Destroys him. Destroys him. So he beats ev everybody in, in like the, in that era, except maybe Tyson Fury. But even when, why did Tyson have like a mental breakdown when he had to rematch him? Because he knew what was going to happen. Yeah. He knew what was going to happen. Klitschko was a punishing puncher, man. Like, you could just tell those shots hurt, man. <laughs> Klitschko would have destroyed this entire era, man. Everybody. Everybody. I don't even think Usyk could have fucked with him, man. I don't. It would have been a very tough fight. Yeah, very. We'll add versus Lennox Lewis. Uh, Lennox Lewis. I think Lennox would have beat him. Vitaly would have beat. Vitaly would have beat Lennox, though. Remember, Vitaly took the fight on two weeks' notice. Dogged him. Lewis didn't. No, Lewis didn't beat his bro. He got fight got stopped on a cut, and Lewis was getting his ass handed to him, and didn't would refuse. He he had an offer on the table to rematch Vitaly for fifty million dollars. He never even made twenty in his whole career, and he turned it down. So what does that tell you? The guy. Did you score that fight? What? Yeah, have you scored that fight? Not recently. Um, did back in the day. Uh, I had Vitaly up. I'd have to check at it. But Vitaly took that shit on like two weeks' notice and still gave him everything he could handle. And Lewis had a full camp. He was not giving, and he refused to rematch him for way more, for more than twice, way more actually than twice uh, the amount he got to fight Mike Tyson. It's worth a rewatch, man, because I think he was battering Lewis in that fight. He was. Man. It was, but that's why I still would like to rewatch it just to see how dominant. He, the one thing I, that's when I learned like, oh, this guy's amazing. Cause if Lennox hit him, he went back and hit Lennox twice. Like he wouldn't let Lennox get any like thought in his head that he was the man in that ring. He was making it very clear on the man. And it's not like he even wanted to quit. He wanted to keep fighting with the eye, and they should have allowed it. Like, I loved when they did it. They watched that fight on, like, they were on a stage, and the fight was playing, and one of them was on each side, and they're talking about it. 
And Vitaly goes, you do know the next round. Uh, if this fight didn't get stopped, you were getting knocked out the next round, right? You were getting <laughs> ready to go. You were getting knocked out the next round. I hope you know that, right? Like he, he would get he. You know they'll usually be nice. He was just telling him like, no, nah, you know, you know, I was fucking you up. You were Dude, getting, and I was ready to keep going. The minute that fight, the minute that fight got going, there was like an eerie shock that you could sense in the commentators and everybody that was watching that shit. Right. Where they were like, "Holy shit! Like this dude is fucking Lewis up, man." It was amazing. What up, BDA? What up, BDA? Yeah, that Pavekin fight. He should have. He should have got a sex charge. Chain with ice. Will add her sure he was a shit fight. Yeah, I need to rewatch it, man. When I watched it live, I I thought it was a shit fight. Then a couple people have told me, ah, it wasn't that bad. You got to rewatch it. But um, uh, again, look, there's a reason Lennox didn't want to rematch Vitaly. And there's a reason Tyson Fury didn't want to rematch Klitsch, uh, Vladimir. And just look what happened when he fought AJ. Just got a few months to cover. So I need to talk to Wasn't a master class. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. I might watch it today. Barely hit and don't get hit. <laughs> More like hit once and stare. Yeah, I'll have to watch it. I'll check it out. Lennox was old and gave him a break. <laughs> sure. Sure. Corey Sanders was a tough motherfucker, too. Uh, I guarantee you offer Pacquiao 50 million to fight Ugas. He'll do it tomorrow. He'll jump in short notice and fight him for 50 million. I guarantee it. It's not like anyone offered him gigantic uh, offers to rematch Ugas, did they? And why would he rematch him? He beat him the first time. Fucking bum. Sorry, you don't know how to score fights. Or you're fucking biased as shit. And troll. And you, you blocked from this channel anyway. Yeah, this is it, Alan. Imagine being as tall as him and still being as good as he was. Yeah, man. It's not easy. <laughs> no. no, his footwork was maybe the best, like, fundamental footwork, best, like, technical footwork of any, like, big heavyweight possible. It was perfect the way he controlled distance, cut angles, pivoted. I mean, his footwork was crazy. And it's totally ignored, you know? Totally ignored how good his footwork really was. Yeah, yeah, syncretic. Corey was always dangerous for anyone, man. Great hand speed, big power. Yeah, no conditioning whatsoever. And the Lehman Brewster loss, the first one, it was, we know he was drugged in that fight. Like, no doubt about it. I mean, Margaret Goodman, head of VADA, went to the – she was the ringside physician in that fight. And she's the one that made that fight get stopped because she's looking at him and she's like uh, – she's positive he has a brain hemorrhage. So she takes him to the hospital. By the time they get to the hospital, he's fine because the drug wore off. And so she's like, wait a second. Like, wait, this don't make any sense. Like, can I, can I please do a blood – blood test on you and he he said yeah and she found something they um she wouldn't say what but something and she in order to go public with it she needed to release his blood test results um and she said klitschko said no and 
The reason you would think because there was probably steroids in there too, you know, PEDs. So he that would have had to come out to to prove, you know, that he was drugged. Yeah, because they can't, you know, you can't just take Goodman's word. She wasn't that Vada didn't exist yet. You know what I mean? So you're gonna have to actually go and give it to an independent place, let them look at it, break it, his whole blood tests down and more than likely PEDs would have came out and he wasn't willing to do that. But she tried. She 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 would beg him like let me go public with this. Let me go public and he said nope. Nope. So he was a hundred percent drugged. Like he should have beat Layman Brewster's ass. Like he didn't. You know. Hmm. Never heard of that one. Yeah, I've talked about it before. It's very interesting. It's actually the whole thing. Okay. Ann Goodman herself telling the whole story is in some Klitschko documentary. Uh, it's in a Klitschko documentary. And I, I talked to her about it, you know, back in the day, maybe like 2016, 2015, 2016, talked to her about it. Um, But that, uh, she didn't tell me what substance it was, though. But yeah, it's actually it's in a Klitschko documentary, one of them, and she's she's in the she's in it, and they basically run the whole fight over. They do like a reenactment in the hospital, and then she's being interviewed throughout the whole thing and explaining everything that happened. Yeah, very, and that's a Don King. Layman Brewster was with Don King, so. Uh, Shady characters. Yep. Who knows how they got to him? Uh, don't know. But someone drugged him at some point. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to watch like the fight and see who's in his team, like who's on his team, yeah. and find out like who had, who was in that corner that had some affiliation with Don King. That would be the guy to blame, or who he cut out of his team after that fight. Yeah. Joshua isn't Frank Bruno. He's a poor man's Klitschko with an uppercut, but without the clinch tactics. Um, uh, I don't know. He's kind of a mix of Frank Bruno oh, and Klitschko. Like me, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And you don't really, his uppercut ain't, you don't really have an uppercut if you don't hold on the back of your head. You know? So you don't really even have an uppercut. He just has a hold you down and then uppercut you. That's not really an uppercut to me. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, yes. Anthony Superior Ace Joshua. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, got crushed by a white man, got crushed by a Mexican. You sure you're superior? Lost me as a fan when he came out with that bullshit. Same here. I I, I, it, I didn't even know he said it, so like when he said it, so I was still a fan after that until finally I actually I saw it on accident. I heard people talk about it and I thought they were fucking joking, dude. I thought they were joking because I was like, this would be a way bigger story if he said that. People gotta be oh, like, no. lying. Someone probably said it and then people were repeating a lie. And then I was just watching one of his interviews or like a, not of an interview, like a, a highlight of just like best Joshua moment type thing. And boom, he said it. I was like, oh my God, he really did. He really did. Yeah, I was like, F that dude, man. Yeah, I saw um I saw Joyce criticizing AJ for talking shit about him and releasing uh he released a video of him and Joyce boxing back in the day and it's just all like AJ's best moments which was dirty, you know. Um hmm. so, you know he doesn't want to fight Joyce because he's trying to convince convince his fans I can beat Joyce. You know what I mean? Like, look at this. I can I I, I already dogged him a bunch in the gym. I don't I don't need to fight him. It's like well, go go you know prove it then. Fight him again. Fight him again. If you lose to Usyk, that's the only guy you should be fighting. Yeah, you got the dirty Lennox uppercut. Exactly. I don't know. I thought 
AJ told blacks to only shop at black stores. <laughs> I want to be Larry Hoover. Aiden, Anthony, I want to be Larry Hoover and Joshua. That tells you everything you need to know about him, man. Um, he got the dirty Lennox uppercut. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, AJ would have just been so much better if he didn't put on all that muscle. Like, we, we played that one amateur fight of his, and the way he was built in that fight was, like, perfect. He should have gained maybe 10, 10 more pounds, 15 more pounds tops. Because he was still fluid, like how Lennox was fluid. But once he put on all that weight, all the fluidity left. As AJ lived by his, I fuck no, he's shopping fucking Gucci, Louis Vuitton. Hey, I'm shopping. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> rules for thee, no rules for me. Yeah, you know, live by his own fucking ethos. Yeah, AJ quit versus short fat man. Klitschko never quit. Ringside visit. Oh, what's this, Jack? Dr. Goodman should have stopped Casamay or Corrales. Uh, one, Dr. Homansky of the Nevada State Athletic Commission said that Goodman's affix asphyxiation threat was wrong. What? Oh, I don't, I'm not familiar. I saw the fight, but I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. Dr. Goodman should have stopped Casimir Corrales one. Romanski of the Nevada State Goodman's. I mean, you know asphyxiation means like what? What do you mean by uh, asphyxiation threat was wrong? What do you mean there? Is that a is that like is that an uh, autofill word that was wrong or something? So I'm not sure what you mean by that. Nacho Libre. <laughs> Nacho fucking Libre. Nacho Libre's fat, fatter brother. And then couldn't even dominate an even fatter version. And then you had the fucking run. Yeah, back foot and jab. Yeah, I was like, dude, this guy just humiliated you, and you're like, okay with a decision win on this guy? You're big bad AJ. You should blow this guy out the water. <laughs> yeah, but Jack, please explain the asphyxiation threat. No. Should never oh, should not have stopped it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Should not have stopped it. Uh, oh man. Um. Well, again, you know the this guy is Hamansky is. Uh, you know he's not the fucking the ringside physician, so he's looking like afterwards and getting probably more information. But Goodman has to make her best educated guess on at the moment. You know what I mean? Like she can only by look at a guy and judge by what she sees in that moment in a split second has to make a decision. Amansky gets to see um, all the, you know, it, it's like Monday morning quarterbacking. Like, oh, he goes to the hospital and it turns out she was wrong. So he's like, well, she was wrong. It's like, well, yeah, but motherfucker, you weren't in that corner. You had one minute to make a decision. And all signs are saying it is uh, a threat. So, you know, I mean, it, it, obviously in hindsight, she was wrong. But what, what are you going to do? You know, in hindsight, yeah, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. The cuts in Diego's mouth. Goodman said he could have uh, choked on his own blood. Well, it's it's it's. Well, you got to think about it. you have that much blood. 
and it's not even choked. Like you're breathing, so a bunch of blood particles are going into your lungs. You literally fill your fucking lungs up with fluid, blood. Um, yeah, I, I, I now I do remember. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't. A guy swallowing that much blood, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Because I've seen that, personally, like, front row, right in my own eyes with Marquez Peden. And when I saw that dude, you know, you know, he had a cut in his mouth, um, almost swallowing blood, and then going back to his corner and just, like, vomit after vomit of blood, all the blood he swallowed, and, like, dry heaving and dry heaving, and then they send him back. And that was going to happen to Diego. You can't swallow blood like that and then go right back out and fight. You're, you're like, no, that, that shit probably should be stopped, man. Because you're going to get really hurt when, really hurt, when all of a sudden you can't even move because you're Billy and you want to vomit. You're out there. Imagine, like, being it deathly ill. You know, blood going into your lungs, your stomach full of blood, and you're trying to fight. You're all, like, hot, because, you know, and you, you get all hot and sweaty when you want to throw up. You know, you just imagine being, like, on the verge of barfing right in the middle of a round. Like, you're not even going to be able to move from punches. Um, so, it, uh, fuck the asphyxiation. It's the just swallowing that much blood in a professional boxing match. I don't know, man. I saw that firsthand. And it ain't um, it ain't pretty, dude. It was insane. It was fucking insane. And he just kept vomit every round because everything he swallowed that round, he would come back and vomit, and then dry heave and dry heave, and, and then just go right back out and get his ass handed to him. Once he started swallowing blood, he just took the beating of a fucking lifetime from then on. So I don't know. You can always fight again, like, and they did. They always they did fight again. Oh my god! I I okay. I was watching Disturb Reality's channel the other day, right? <laughs> so I'm watching. Uh, he did that thing on a cartel guy setting two dudes on fire. So then I wanted to watch the actual video. So I go to LiveGore.com and go to their cartel videos to try and find it. It wasn't on there, but uh, I saw Ghost Rider. I saw a bunch of other stuff. Ghost Riders, prof. But I saw a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then mixed in, there was this other video of uh, some dude was live camming himself doing erotic asphyxiation, dude, right? Um, and he he's holding himself up, like, with a belt wrapped around his hand. He's holding himself up, choking himself out, going to town. It's only, like, a you know 30-second video or whatever, you know? They don't show the whole thing, just the clip that matters. <laughs> and he starts to pass out, and he thought this would be like a safety thing to hold him up. And the belt slips off his hand. So then he goes out. And he's like, uh, and then he starts like kind of seizing up, seizing up. And his little thing, he just goes, <laughs> and then he just goes out and dies. And then he's on cam dead just hanging there it was like oh my god man i really saw a video of someone die that way dude oh it was dude it was just so disgusting like just degeneracy of a, a another level dude degeneracy of another level but i'd never seen anything like that man crazy Yeah, it was crazy. It was so disturbing, man. <laughs> it was funny, though, man. Whoop H again for money, dude. I don't know what you mean there. Don't know what you mean. I'll take a leap. Ah. Ooh. So, Whitaker swallowed a ton of blood. Yeah, yeah. I really, we really got to rescore that fight on our next live stream. We've been talking about that one for a while. 
just because you know they you know the American press always scream robbery, robbery, robbery. Um, and I haven't watched that shit in years. I just want to see, like, you know, was it really a robbery, or is it just American media, as usual, wanting to stick up for the American guy? So they, you know, call robbery. Just kind of just like what they did with De La Hoya. Because, dude, fuck that. Dude, look, Pernell's one of my favorite fighters. I think even the dude I ended up, like, getting close with. But he, um, he lost. He lost that fight with De La Hoya, dude. Like, De La Hoya beat him. Like, so they called that a robbery for years. I grew up, like. Because I didn't score that fight, and I just grew up thinking, like, okay, Pernell won that one, too, and got robbed. He won Chavez and got robbed. Well, it turns out, no, he didn't beat um, uh, Oscar. I watched that maybe, like, you know, seven years ago. And, dude, I was like, what? No, Oscar won this shit. But I will have to see... Uh, the Chavez one and do a rescore on that as well. Because if it turns out that he actually lost that one too, shit. Man. Fight happened in America and Chavez was past it. Their formula suggests that they favored her now. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Their formula and, you know, track record. Absolutely suggests that they were favoring Purnell, and well, that we know they did want Purnell to win. The American gold medalist, of course, they wanted him to win. I mean, look at the, the, the same thing they did with. Um, oh, hold on, I got mute this real quick. Same thing they did with Melger Taylor, right? With Chavez. Med Melger Taylor should have beat him. Melger Taylor was robbed. Was robbed in a victory. No. He fucking should have answered the ref. He was brutalized and wouldn't answer the ref. So you stop it. Don't care how much time is left. You should have fucking answered the ref. So that's two fights that guaranteed that, you know, they were wanting and begging Purnell to win or, or Chavez to lose, I should say. Um, you know, or an American. Uh, and, you know, they wanted the American, let's could say Oscar De La Hoya. You know, they wanted the American to be a Mexican. And, you know, they didn't. So they screamed robbery. So I'll guarantee the Chavez on Chavez and Purnell certainly fits the model as well. Um. Yeah, it's not always about money, man. It's it's usually never about money, man, dude. It's usually never about money. Uh Chavez won. Um, you were fucked by Lou Duva. Why were you betting? I mean, Whitaker for now. Or um, oh, Chavez Whitaker won. Was fucked by Lou Duva. Um. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you mean, but yeah, Taylor and Lou Duva. This is what I was. I thought you were talking about at first, Jack. Yeah, Jane. Uh, I talked about this before. Meldrick Taylor wasn't fucked over by Richard Steele. He was fucked over by Lou Duva jumping up on the apron and, you know, getting involved. Because Richard Steele's right in front of his face right here. Lou Duva's over there, jumped up on the apron, holding on to the rope, screaming at him. So he's just staring over at his manager like, well, what, do you, what should I say? What should I say? What should I say? Wow, this guy's asking them his question numerous times. He's like, what should I say? Who, what should I say? Huh? Huh? Because he keeps going, huh? Huh? He's trying to hear him. But pay attention to the rat asshole. And then finally, uh, steals like, fights off. 
That ain't Richard Steele's fault. You know, then Duva screams, starts going nuts, and the media who don't know shit start going, yeah, that sounds about, yeah, that's right, Lou, that's right, Lou. No, no. No, Lou is the problem. Lou is the problem. Hey, love is passion. Love Lou. Love Lou's passion. But he made, he fucking fucked up all the time. Timothy Figueroa says, I thought Whitaker beat Chavez 7 5, but he was clinching too much in the later half of the fight. Yeah, I've never even scored that fight. I never even scored that fight. Um, so I'm, we're going to have to watch that on Odyssey uh, one of these days here. Probably next stream because we really need to do that. Oh, you meant Taylor? Okay, okay. I got gotcha. you. Platt. Jack. Yeah. Um,. Okay, well that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch that and see what the, what the fuck actually happened there. Dude, I'm probably gonna end up doing it today myself. Um, not that like, I not that I wouldn't do it again, but I'm really curious what happened. Um, or I might do one of these streams or uh, film studies instead. I don't know. Where are we at? Four hours here. Four hours. Alexis Arguello, Aaron Pryor film study. Um, about their fights? About their fights or just them? What was Duva screaming? I I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that's ever been released. I don't, I don't even know if you can hear it on the telecast. But, uh, guys, I am going to have to, uh, like, Aaron Pryor being a cheater. Yeah, we can take a look at that stuff on um, Odyssey, on the next Odyssey stream. But I got to get off here, guys. I could go for four and a half, and it's, uh, it's already four minutes, or four hours, 16 minutes, so uh, coming up on the end. I'm going to get off here now. Got some shit to go take care of. Uh, if I stay on here too late, the stores will be closed. So, yeah, God bless you, Nordic, and God bless everybody else. I'm going to get up out of here. Um, uh, yeah, De La Hoya beat Whitaker close, but no robbery. Exactly, exactly. It was close for sure. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, okay, guys. Uh good stream, good talking to you, but gots to go. So um again, I can't make any promises that I'll be on tonight. Um I would like to jump do something again tonight, but I don't know. It all depends what's um you know what's going on with with my mom so we'll have to wait and see but again salute everybody thanks for coming on everyone who jumped on the stream uh, ragnarok alan um, mma everyone in the chat appreciate it um nine three so silver dude come on man yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. Like, I, I've never scored the fight, but even I know 9 3 is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, like, where do you get this shit from, man? Like, what the fuck? You don't care about truth, do you? Like, you don't even know what the fucking. How, do, you, do you even know how to score a fight? Like, do you even know how to score a fucking fight? Or is it just, I want this guy to win and I'm going to create an imaginary fucking card? Yeah, or 10 to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's like. 
God, you used to add some input. Now it's just 100% fucking fucktard bullshit. You haven't dropped a fucking sensible comment since you fucking been back here. Ridiculous, dude. Let me get silver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm back on for multiple streams now. Hasn't left one fucking sensible comment. You call it how you see it? No, you call it how you want to see it. Oh. All right, look. You're gone. Fuck off. Idiot. Oh. When you grow up or quit fucking sucking BBC, come back. Till then. Now don't even come back. Just fuck off. <laughs> but maybe one day you'll stop sucking BBC, okay? Fuck off. All right, Alan. <laughs> I'm out of here, man. Everybody All right, man. One man. Peace and love. Thanks for jumping on, Alan. All right, later. All right, fine. Again, I'll try to stop back later tonight. Can't guarantee anything, but yeah, let's go. Fuck out of here, Silver. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> God bless Nordic. God bless everyone else. Be safe, fellas. Stay safe.